cool. Welcome everyone, we should be going live now. This is Andres Restart. This is the our final E3 2018 predictions discussion. I am bro I'm broined. I am joined <laughs> by my good friend Brandon from What About Nintendo. Hey guys. And a good friend of his, who I also know, and he's been on the podcast before, Pedro. Hey, everybody. So, well, actually, Pedro, it's been a while, but... Um, yeah, it's been a little while. It's been a little while, yeah. But, you know, last time we had you on, it was great. It was awesome. And I think this, there's a lot to talk about this time. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. I think, you know, I think a lot of people are really excited for this. I can't wait. In fact, I know some people are already in the chat. What's up, Josh? Hello, Sam Does Gaming. Hey, Blockstar Dude. Brandon, you were there, of course. And Sab is 64. How are you guys doing? So, there's quite a few things to, to talk about this time around, and uh, I like Star Fox music playing. I hope you guys can hear it. Hopefully, it's not too loud, but also not too quiet. But I have, like, a little bit of list. I told you guys to get a, a list together for yourselves, and I figured what we could do is just kind of, like, we each have our list, right? And if you come up with other ideas, obviously, just bring it out there. We can just go in a, you know, in a circle, right? And just one by one, we each talk about one thing from each of our lists and go through this. And then, you know, every few minutes, we'll go to, to the chat, see what you guys are thinking, right? But we're going to be focusing on the discussion, guys. So just keep that in mind. But towards the end, we'll have a Q&A. We'll talk about you, your predictions in the chat, and we'll see how they compare to ours. And then, you know, of course, we're going to speculate. We're going to have fun because this is the E3 predictions discussion all about nintendo by the way in case you're new to the channel and if you are new to the channel make sure to like and subscribe so yeah and also check out brandon from what about nintendo the link to his channel is in the description below um yeah actually we also have a whole bunch of other e3 videos you guys want to check that out but let's get started so who's ready who wants to get who, who wants to like you know just jump into this and who's who wants to go first mm. Hmm, I feel like I, I, I can go first. All I've right. got something. Get the hype train rolling. Uh, I guess I, my first prediction would be, I think Animal Crossing Switch is going to be announced. Wrong. They announced at E3. Wrong. Oh, no. Wrong. The humanity. Wrong. No, I agree but, with you. I agree yeah. with you, actually. But I think it's going to be... I, I kind of put... I didn't think about them too long, so maybe I'll shift them around here and there, but I think it will probably come... December. That's what I'm thinking. That or October. December or October. One of those two. I would like December because that's like right before the holidays. If you pick it up, then you can do all the Christmas events right away, which are really fun. But then again, it's October. You can do the Halloween and fall events. So, you know, you got Thanksgiving in there as well. So either of those I'd be very happy with. But I think Animal Crossing Switch is going to be announced to C3. It's going to come either October or December. Hmm. Well, I also agree with you that I think Animal Crossing will be at this year's show, but I do not mm -hmm. think it's coming out this year. I fair think enough. there's a fair chance it will be making out by the end of the fiscal year, though, which would be by mm -hmm. March 2019. I think it could be like that big early title, and I think the first Animal Crossing on GameCube also came out during that time, so there could be some parody there. I just think this year... Um, with what I think is coming, it, it would be it would fit better for an early 2019 title okay. as as the best fit. I mean, if it's if it's holiday 2019, I know their heads will be rolling. So I'm not gonna oh, I'm gosh. not gonna predict that. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, especially because you brought up a great point a few months ago about how the mobile game of Animal Crossing. I think that also <laughs> suggests that it could be around the corner. And on top of it, if you look at the history of Nintendo consoles, excluding the Wii U. They always get an Animal Crossing out there within the first two years, so it makes sense that we would be getting this within that two-year mark, which would be, you know, by the end of this fiscal year, March 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Pedro, um, are you an Animal I... Crossing fan? Oh, well, definitely. I mean, I hate I... Animal Crossing, oh. actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't. I don't hate Animal Crossing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But okay. yeah. <laughs> I I played uh, New Leaf and I liked it a lot. Uh, I was addicted to it for a while uh, until I found out about like the turnips and that you have to get up early for that. And I do not do that. So, hmm. Uh, hmm. and that, I mean, that wasn't like the breaking point. Like I'm not playing this anymore <laughs> because of turnips. But uh, that's really the only one I played though. And I agree with y'all. I think I think uh, there's gonna be a new Animal Crossing uh, on the Switch in like, yeah. Either early 
2019 or late 2018. Mm -hmm. I could see it either way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so yeah, we're all in agreement that there's like this six month window that Animal Crossing is going to hit, right? Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. October to March, somewhere in between there. You know, so we, we're, we're pretty much on a similar page here. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, now that you guys mentioned, I, I could definitely see it coming, you know, uh, you know, more February or March or maybe even January. Um, I could see it coming early next year. I, I guess maybe the fanboy inside of me wants to see it this year. And that's why I predicted it that way. But I could see it getting pushed out. And I wouldn't be too upset about that. Yeah, I mean, especially with all the games we're going to be talking about. If we're even slightly right, this is going to be <laughs> an amazing year. Um, right. But we will definitely be wrong about some things. I guarantee you that. That's my first prediction, by the way. We're going to be wrong about some stuff. But we also may be right about some stuff, too. So that's my other, that's my second prediction. And I, I went out of turn there because those predictions don't count. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, I, as just, you know, me talking about Animal Crossing, for me, like, the Animal Crossing I played the most was actually Animal Crossing on the Nintendo DS. Not the 3DS, but the DS. And I played Wild World. And my two most fond memories, or my one most fond memory <laughs> is, is, um, when you would reset the game or turn off your DS without saving and you would come back, Rossetti would just come in there and it was just the craziest fourth wall breaking mechanic I had ever yeah. seen in a video game ever. Like, he wouldn't let me play the game. He was like, how dare you? How dare you? And every time you would do it, he would have a completely different dialogue. Like, they must have put in so many different types of dialogues for that. He's like, how don't you ever turn off your game without saving? That is wrong. That is a sin. You, you are getting on timeout. And just the, the premise that, that Rossetti, an in-game character, would punish me and slow down my gameplay it was just amazing. I've never seen that in a video game before, and that was just a crazy, crazy thing. Now, the other memory I mentioned was just that whenever I wouldn't play every day, guess what would happen? Weeds. Weeds, weeds, weeds. Weeds everywhere. Which is also kind of an interesting weeds. thing. I like how Animal Crossing sort of like you have to kind of live with it right um which is probably also why i don't always play it um but also you know i appreciate right. them for the franchise and there are a lot of people who like to go in it on a daily basis or every other day and which is really cool on top of the seasons which it's kind of featured in mario Kart 8 deluxe which is also awesome mm -hmm. yeah i think that was uh that was the point where I stopped playing New Leaf was when I, like, didn't play for, like, a week and there were so many weeds. And then I, like, couldn't find that last weed and I just gave up. Yeah. Right. Never you gotta played get it. the town ordinance and then you'll be fine. There's no weeds. Hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, Brandon, because um, I think, I feel like you are the more of the, the most knowledgeable of Animal Crossing, right? Or at least the biggest, the biggest fan here. Of us three. Uh, do you what kind of changes do you think we could be seeing for Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch? Uh, that's a good question. Having only played New Leaf, it's kind of hard to say. But I did play the one on uh, you know Animal Crossing Park Camp on your on your phone, the mobile version. I actually think there's some things that they could add from from that one because in that one you could actually gather materials and craft stuff that wasn't at the store like there was a store and you could just go buy it with bells but if you didn't if it just didn't happen to be at the store you could unlock the ability to go actually just craft it with materials that you find so i think that would be something that could be cool for uh the game because uh you can well you can buy things in new leaf that aren't in the store you have to have already acquired them before so you have to have already some reason have gotten possession of them, whether gifted to you or bought them or got them from some kind of prize or something. You had to have some way obtained them before. This way, you don't have to uh, do that. You can, like, in that game, the more you leveled up, the more furniture you could unlock to just build, even if you've never had it before. So I think that'd be a cool mechanic. And just, I think they should add more interactive uh, towns projects, like the the public works projects i love because that. in in pocket camp there was like pools and skateboard rings and stuff and i think you couldn't really interact with them you could watch your animals do it i think it'd be cool if they had like mini games sent around them maybe you could do like tricks on your skateboard and actually earn a little bit of bells and stuff just have fun 
Um, more ways to earn bells just through these interactive things. Maybe they can even have like windmills that generate electricity and give you money over time. Cool things like that. So those are the kind of things I'm thinking they could add. So if you came, if you were at the impromptu discussion we had about Pokemon last week, last Tuesday, we brought came in. We actually were actually talking a little bit about Animal Crossing towards the end as well. And I had this very amazing idea <laughs> <laughs> called called Animal Crossing Homicide. Oh gosh! So what if? Oh no! <laughs> what if there's a what if there's a town? Every town has one murderer, right? One serial killer. What if Animal Crossing had a serial killer, and it was kind of an element of the town? It was a town project to take them down and find them. Maybe you could even take up jobs, and maybe in Animal Crossing you can take up jobs, and one of the jobs you can take up is a sheriff. Hmm. That could be cool for like a mini game, but I don't yeah, know if that I want that as like a base uh, mechanic. It'd be a little weird. Yeah, in all seriousness, I don't, I don't actually think they should call the game Animal Crossing Homicide, but it would be hilarious. Um, but if they did have like a detective mini game right, where there was yeah. like a murderer animal, yeah, exactly. Cat, that'd be really cool. Yeah, like exactly. Like, what if they do? They have like jobs that you can get, or is it just like odd stuff by collecting and no, stuff? No, they don't. But they do have uh, after. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival came out. The only good thing about that game is that they ported uh, the only good mini game in the entire game to the 3DS version. So they have mini games and stuff in the game where you just completely go and you just play this like alternate game. Like it's a survival game where you land on an island, you have to go gather materials and stuff. Like that's what it is. And so they could do like a, a mystery one as well. So they could do that kind of stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah, well, yeah, so, like, they could they could do that. It could be one of the things they could be doing for the not just the sheriff one where you find a killer, or, as I noticed Jared say, or maybe j join the killer and help him kill the townspeople, which would be hilarious. Oh, um, but, like, just the idea of having little jobs, right, like, min as mini games, that would be really cool. Maybe there could be a sheriff, maybe there could be a driver, maybe there could be a lawn, like, a, a gardener who, who mows all the weeds away, right? Like, so, you know, there's, there's different things they could do, which would be really awesome. Um, yeah. So I'm excited for that, and obviously I think Animal Crossing will be in HD. I think they'll have stronger online connectivity because it is on the Switch as well. You know, right? I think there's a lot of options here. It'll be, we could see more people frequent other each other's towns, like with more frequency, right. greater numbers. Like maybe it's not just four people; maybe we could have eight, twelve, sixteen people in a town, and maybe they could have like festivals and party games, like they come seasonally. Like you know how like there's Splatfest in Splatoon. What mm. if every once in a while? Animal Crossing has a festival, right? And in the festival, there are mini games, and everyone can join in together, like with your friends, and you partake in mini games right. at a festival, like an actual fair. I mean, they have fair. fishing tourneys and stuff. Yeah. Like they could incorporate those, like online, where it's like instead of just having fishing tourneys against like local animals, you could have a fishing tourney online against a whole bunch of people. So that could be really cool. Yeah. Because your animals always, they they almost always, there's no hope of winning. As long as you participate, you're 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 probably gonna win, unless you just like get really unlucky or something. Nah. So playing online would be way better. Definitely, absolutely. So, um, should we try to predict a name just for fun? Let's do that. Let's just it'll just be fun to try to predict a name for each of these oh, games, gosh. like the full title. Animal Crossing Homicide. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Pedro, do you have any ideas? Not yet. Maybe. Possibly. I have no clue. I mean. You I'm thinking it. if they Animal Crossing no clue. <laughs> that that could be it, maybe even. But like uh like seeing how they're making Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and stuff, like mm -hmm. and they're incorporating Pokemon Go, I feel like they might go a similar route with the Animal Crossing for the Switch and have some kind of uh interactivity between Pocket Camp and the new game. Mm -hmm. Um Hmm. Although I never played Pocket Camp, so I don't know what kind of connectivity it could be. Right. Um, so I I want to say that there might be something, like, connected in the names. I don't know. I mean, probably not Pocket, because right. Pocket implies the phone. But maybe there'll be... I don't Home, know. Camp. Home Camp. Home <laughs> Camp. Home Camp. Yeah. Or... Well, slightly you know, doesn't yeah. fit in your Pocket Camp. <laughs> I do right. think there's going to be something about this game that's going to be like its draw. It's, it makes it unique, right? right. Um, and a lot of times when there's something unique about a game, that's what sort of kind of like, you know, uh, gives it maybe a reasoning for a name. So then, I guess what we have to predict what would be its, its draw, the thing that would separate it from 
from other games, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe it wouldn't necessarily have one thing that could separate from other games, but if it does, I feel like that would make sense. Um, I don't even know if I necessarily want to have one big thing that separates right. from the rest. Yeah, or maybe there's something that they could do that I don't know that I want. Yeah. Like, I didn't... Like, Animal like, Crossing they added Homicide. Mayor last time. <laughs> uh, but they actually, Pedro, you bring up a good point, because they did, like, a long time ago, when they first talked about Animal Crossing on phones, they said it would connect and work for Animal Crossing on other platforms, like, on a home console or on, like, a dedicated... They said dedicated consoles, and it never did anything, a new leaf at all. Like, never. So, obviously, it has to do something in this next one. Otherwise, unless they decide to not do that, but I mean, maybe you could like do mini I, games, I got transfer it. bells over or something. I don't really got it, but I got it. <laughs> Animal Crossing Grand Woods. Grand Woods. Well, I'm just. I also I thought Grand about some of the names. Woods. I just I just pull it up to pull out of my butt. But like, <laughs> think about it. What I thought about some of the Animal Crossing names. We got Wild World. We have New Leaf. You know, uh, you know, Pocket Camp or whatever. Like. I guess they're not necessarily... It, I was thinking about what I just said, and I guess for Animal Crossing it's slightly different. The titles are more kind of naturally organic, so I was like, oh, Grand right. Woods. So that's what that's what I'm going to just guess. That, you know, it's probably going to be wrong, probably wrong, right? But that Animal is, Crossing, sounds Grand so Woods. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, sounds one of those, like, like one of those fake E3 leaks. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. Animal but Crossing yeah, Evergreen. Nature, very nature focused. Except city city folk. That wasn't nature focused. You're right. Animal Stop. Crossing Evergreen Metal City. Metal? Animal metal. Crossing Living in the Ghetto. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's it. I think I, that's 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 what I'm settling on. That's it. Animal Crossing Living in the Ghetto. Uh, yeah. That'd be interesting. That'd be very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't really think know it would go over well. But you know, no, it wouldn't. No. Hey man, a lot of a lot of these series are taking more darker turns and going for a you know they're branching yeah. out from the child's audience and you know going for people who are a bit older. So I wouldn't be surprised if they went for like a like an Animal M-rated Crossing. Animal Homicide. Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe I've known this whole time that it's Animal Crossing Homicide. Just, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe he's got. Maybe you've already got the information and right. you're just uh presenting yeah. it like it's silly but no I he knows don't. Uh, i don't like i, don't. I came I... up with this idea oh yeah how crazy that they just wouldn't make it wouldn't happen it just no. never happened. Um, if, if it i will give you a million dollars if they what if you know, what if it was inside the c3 <laughs> i'll hold you to it um <laughs> but uh it could be called animal crossing happy tree friends um, what's funny about well, that, you guys know oh, Happy Tree no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Which is literally no, no, the same no. thing as Animal Crossing Homicide. But it sounds like a normal Animal Crossing game if you don't know about that show. I don't, I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. It ha- Happy Tree Friends is like this really weird cartoon where they're stuffed in cutesy animals. I don't, I don't know if they're stuffed, but there's cute little animals and they just kill each other in the most diabolical, like, explicit way. Yeah. That's, nice. that, yeah. So, um, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat, unless there's anything you guys want to add to this Animal Crossing part of the, of the discussion. No. All right. That's so, pretty good. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Hey, Devaluki. Hey, Jared. Pac-Man. Taco Soul Dragon. Um, man, I'm glad, I'm glad that, um, you agree with me, Devaluki, that they should definitely update the hair and the skin detail, right? I don't think it's running on Unreal. We're talking about Smash 5, he was asking mm-hmm. me. Um, I don't think it's going to be based on Unreal, but it... it Actually, well, Bandai Namco may... I don't know. Was Smash 4, Smash 4 wasn't based on Unreal, right? No, it was their own proprietary no. engine. Yeah, yeah, it's probably another proprietary engine. Uh, probably doesn't know. upgrade ver- the version of the Smash 4 engine, to be honest. Yeah. Probably with better... Maybe some particle effects. Hopefully better lighting. And yeah, as you're saying, hair and skin. Because the hair is... It's okay for some characters. And other characters are like, this is not okay. Yeah, it's very simple. Um, Sabbath actually brings up an interesting point here. He's saying, he has another question. Do you think Furukawa will present the games or Reggie? Honestly, he'd rather have Reggie. Reggie. Um, it's a great question. But the timing of Shuntaro Furukawa coming into power 
is kind of close. It's not quite. I think he, he technically won't be in power until after the E3 show, but it would be interesting to see him show up on stage in a presentation. And if, actually, guys, we could have more than just one. Reggie could be there. Right. Bill could be there. Miyamoto could be there. Right. We could have several, you know, key Nintendo heads like there. It doesn't just have to be one. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Shuntaro Furukawa there. Uh, it could be really interesting. And he, he has, you know, his ties with Pokemon Company. Maybe we'll see him talk about Pokemon a little bit more at the video presentation, right? I don't know. I also think they want to respect Awada, right, and his presence and what he did. Like, So that's another thing. I'm not sure how they'll manage that. Um, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? If they were to sort of take his role or do something slightly different for mm. Awada. I think it would be very different. I don't... Furukawa is he's more outgoing than Tatsumi Kimishima, but I, he's not Iwata, you know? At least not that I can tell. Maybe he is. Maybe he's super outgoing. Um, but I think he'll be there, probably. I just don't think he'll be, like, the main guy. Or maybe he'll be the main guy, and then there'll be other people. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be the only person, obviously. There's always different people. But I think he'll be there for at least some of it, probably. Hopefully. I agree. Yeah. I think... I think he's going to be there for a little bit, but I feel like Reggie Reggie and Bill are probably going to be, like, the big, uh, what, what's the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. They're, they're going to probably do more of the showcasing and yeah. everything. Um, no, I, I agree with yeah. you. I, I see them doing at least a big part of it. I don't see Shuntaro Furukawa taking up the whole thing. I think it'll be very minuscule, right, since it's his first yeah. time. Actually, I don't know how his stage presence is at all. <laughs> that's the thing, right? He may have the worst stage presence. Like, so that's... that's. But Reggie and Bill, we, we know them. We see them. They've done skits. You know, they have an energy to them. So it's easier to, to see them doing it. I mean, I, I agree with you. But I wouldn't be shocked to see Shuntaro Furukawa involved. So... Right. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of guys are asking about Smash Brothers. Um, Pedro, do you have Smash predictions? Do you want do, do you want to go next? Or do you have a different prediction you want to go for? Um, I've got Smash Wishlist if you want that. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do your but, Smash uh, Wishlist. Or do you want uh, to save it? I mean, I mean, well, I mean, first I'll start with, like, actual predictions. I, th okay. I mean, yeah. I think um, there have been, like, those rumors of, like, them revealing Simon Belmont and and Ridley at E3, and I don't think either of those are true. I think Simon Belmont would either he could be in the game, but he wouldn't be an E3 reveal. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I have no clue. Uh, I mean, I think there's a good possibility we might see like Rex from Xenoblade Two at E3, yeah, and like no, a Smash yeah. trailer or something. Um. And, I mean, they always reveal a third-party newcomer, so, I mean, that one could be Simon Belmont, honestly, but uh, I feel like it would probably more likely be, like, Bomberman or something. Hmm. Um, or they'll throw in one of the Rabbids, because they sure love oh, that crossover. Wow. wow, that's actually a thing. That could totally fit, you're right. I didn't They're even think just about gonna... the Rabbids. Yeah. Or hmm. they'll just straight up throw in Sands from Undertale live everyone's nightmare mm, i didn't even play undertale so i can't really speak to that mm. yeah but i know people Sydney. joke a lot about it how like since undertale's on the switch now like sans could be in on in smash brothers and everyone freaks out about how horrible that would be i think it'd be cool i just think there's other people that should be in there first andy i really want andy from advanced wars yeah. you can tell because that's the picture that I use. Maybe he'll evolve past just an assist trophy, like and oh, it'd be cool. How would he play though? Like, would he be oh, on top of? I can tank? go on for hours about this topic. All right, well, let's go. Okay, all right. I'll, I will outline his entire move set. Basically, uh, some of his like simple like jab combos and whatever's are mostly just him attacking with his wrenches. Uh, and then otherwise, like, his smash attacks and special attacks would involve him building units. Uh, like, forward smash could be, like, uh, a bazooka unit. Um, and his, like, up smash could be, like, 
capturing a city and it like rises up kind of like uh that one assist trophy where Ooh. there's like this city yeah but like but like on a smaller scale yeah 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 and like he's God. I mean, his, all his air attacks could be like with the air units, like his up. He could be a transport copter, uh, forward I, air. Like I a, can a, see a, it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of potential. Like he could just have like even his uh, like forward tilt could just be infantry units, just like shooting kind of like Sheik's needles. Would he be? Would he play kind of like um, Olimar and Pikmin? Kind of, not exactly, uh, but just like the idea of sending out units, right? Because uh, I would like to. Probably not the same way that Olimar works, but I think like that could work as like his one of his specials could just be like he builds a unit that just kind of free roams and attacks on its own. Do you think he'd still uh, whack people with his wrench? Oh, definitely. Probably. Definitely. Yeah. That that's at least his jab combo. Like yeah. Okay. Hit, hit him with a wrench. Maybe even his like neutral air could just be like wrenches. I don't know. It. Yeah. I think he he has a lot of potential in both areas to use his wrenches as weapons and then also with units for his special moves. And I know what his final really... smash could be. Yeah? So, like, I remember playing Dual Strike, and there were parts where they had, like, satellites that shot, like, lasers that beamed down onto the Earth and caused certain destruction. That could yeah. be his final smash, like a giant satellite oh, yeah. that shoots down with, like, a nuclear-powered, like, laser mm -hmm. beam that just incinerates yeah, use, everything. Um... He could use silos because they're like that, silo yeah. missiles that you yeah, can just yeah. like target anywhere on the map. And so, the, like his final smash could just be a bunch of silo missiles just all over the place. Nice. Yeah, that would be really that would be cool. cool. I had to go play Advance Wars Dual Strike again. I really love that game. It's yeah, amazing. that was Dual Strike is probably my favorite in the series. So good, but yeah, it's so good. Although Advance Wars Two has a special place in my heart because I grew up with that one. Okay. Yeah, but I'm I I just love Advance Wars a lot. <laughs> Do you have any Advance Wars predictions or no? Uh, I really, really, really want them to to have Advance Wars on the Switch at E3, but I'm not counting on it because I know that they're going to have Fire Emblem for the Switch, which right, like since it's the same people who make it, I imagine that they would be focusing all their attention on. Fire Emblem for the Switch. Yeah, so, so. I, I have a question for you, right? Um, like, I've always envisioned, well, I want to say always, but, like, because of Advance Wars has been, like, dormant for a while, right? I kind of, like, if they were to go, if they were to bring Advance Wars back, I almost feel like it would be, like, an eShop title. Kind of, like, like an HD but still 2D game. Like, you know, they'll still use yeah. the sprites but make it make it make it beautiful. Maybe maybe it'll look kind of like Octopath Traveler in that way, right? And use those kinds of graphics rather than creating like, you know, an open like 3D world, you know, which is kind of what I think Fire Emblem was going to go with, which is really exciting. We'll get to that later. But how would you feel about that if it was just more of like a digital download game that was 20, 30 bucks? Honestly, I would be happy if there's anything new Advance Wars related. I don't care if it's like a full blown game or if it's a little eShop game. I just want something new. Just I just want them to acknowledge that the series exists. <laughs> yeah. Because no, I don't think right. they've mentioned the series in a couple of years at all. But man, it is it is my favorite and like if if they made even just one on the eShop, like I would be so down. I'd be so yeah, no, I would be down, yeah. especially if it especially feels just like the Game Boy and DS games. Yeah. That's all I want. Especially if it could also be like, I don't know, if they announce the new uh, new Advance Wars and uh, to accompany it, they have, uh, you know, Andy and the yeah. and Smash Brothers. That, that, would, so much sense. that would be the best possible timeline. <laughs> the best possible timeline. This is the ultimate timeline. So, yeah. but let's talk about this timeline a little bit more. Um, kind of bringing things back a little bit uh, to Smash. So, I, I hear people talking about Ridley. There's some debate going on in the chat about Ridley. There's rumors about Ridley, and you don't think we'll see Ridley at E3, right? That that's. that's I don't think opinion. he's going to be at E3. I don't think. He, I mean, do you think he's me in the game? Anything is possible. I don't right, think. Of course, every anything is. Anything possible. is possible. He, Sakurai said he wasn't going to put the villager in Brawl because the character was too innocent, and then there he was in Smash 4. 
then he said that Ridley is too big, but there have been enough like mods that I've seen of Ridley, like where they shrunk him down enough to where he was still big, but not like as big as he is in like that one Metroid stage in Smash Four. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's certainly possible. I don't think it'll be at E three though. If it does happen, it probably won't be at E three. Okay. Um, I kind of agree that I think Simon Belmont... Unless... Belmont's... What? Unless... Okay. Uh, unless they tie it in with Metroid Prime 4. I think they will, because actually. Yeah, I think if yeah. that's the case, if they have, like, Metroid Prime 4 and then follow it up immediately with the Smash trailer, then Ridley's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think something like that's gonna happen. Um, even if it's not Ridley, it might be Silex, right? Or maybe Dark Samus. I think they'll have another Metroid character in Smash Brothers. Um, Definitely. I have heard the rumors about Ridley and Simon Belmont and Ice Climbers. I definitely think Ice Climbers is a hundred percent guaranteed. Essentially, oh yeah, maybe ninety nine point nine percent, but like, because anything is possible, right? But I'm pretty sure Ice Climbers. I'm hedging. I I'd be willing to hedge money on it that oh. the Ice Climbers is gonna be. Ice Climbers are first. definitely coming back. Yeah. The only reason they weren't in the previous game, they already had a working model for it on the Wii U version, is because they wanted parity with the 3DS version, which right. couldn't run it because of eight players, and then imagine 16 with kids of Ice Climbers, it would just be a mess, and they, they just it was too much to handle. So they just scrapped yeah. it from the 3DS one, which meant they scrapped it from the Wii U one. The Switch doesn't have that limitation, so, you know, we're getting Ice Climbers. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, as far <laughs> as Simon Belmont, I agree with you that I don't think they would have show that at E3. I, I think it could he could be a character, but I don't feel like an E3 announcement would be the right place for that. Um, but I do think Ridley has a pretty damn good chance, especially since we all expect Metroid Prime 4 to be there. And if Ridley's going to be in the game, this would be a good time to show him off if he's going to be in the game. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Sakura is like, you know what, I said no, so now I'm going to say yes, right? Like... Kind of like what you said with Villager. So, you know, I think it's possible. We, we never really know. And like I said, there are the rumors, so maybe. Um, but Brandon, what do you feel about this? Do you, do you, are you feeling a Ridley or are you not feeling a Ridley? Or... Mm -hmm. I think there's just so much fan outcry that they might just do it. And I think if they did, it'd be... Like, Smash, I think, is going to be the theme of this E3. And so I think that's the one they're going to be talking about most. And I think a lot of their stuff is going to branch off from character announcements. Right. Uh, so, oh my god, imagine if every single game announcement has a Smash character. That'd be... Like, awesome. literally, imagine their video presentation. They show off the game. Then they have, they have a character representing that in Smash Brothers, right? So Metroid, mm -hmm. Ridley, um, Animal yeah, Crossing, that's what I'm thinking. maybe Isabel, right? Like, um... Uh, what if let's say another fire emblem oh god <laughs> another fire emblem character uh another one another one oh, maybe yeah. there'll be some super duper new cool class in fire emblem and they'll have a character that isn't a clone all right so we're gonna we're gonna go off tangent a little bit because i think it makes sense i think they'll have the xenoblade dlc story dlc at e3 mm. presentation and they will tie that in with a rex and pyra yeah character I, I mean you that know, sounds pretty likely yeah, and you brought it up earlier that you think Rex and Pyro will be in the, in the game, Pedro. So, I'm 100% yeah. I'm certain. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if he's going to replace Shulk, and I hope he doesn't, but oh, yeah. I know he's going to be in. We need more Xenoblade, uh, you know, representation. Yeah. Yeah, can, I, can I get Dunban and Ryan oh, and Dunban. Fiora? There's oh, so much gosh. potential. So My boy, much potential. Dunban. Dunban yeah, is can, a beast. Can I get just a Xenoblade Chronicles fighting game? Honestly, <laughs> Dude, also yeah. possible, but I, I, I'd rather just get a Xenoblade game. But I mean, if they can right. do both, I don't know. Um, but I definitely think I think we're all gonna, Rex and Pyra, and they could tie that in with the story DLC trailer. That seems that makes too much sense for it to not happen because we still haven't gotten the story DLC trailer, right? And that's coming out holiday season. It's basically gonna be kind of like the Breath of the Wild DLC trailer last year. That just it makes too much sense for it to not happen. I'll be shocked. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. No, hey, yeah. oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I agree I'm, with you. Comments right now. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the same. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, well, let's check out the chat then. Um, because we're probably going to be on Smash for a little bit. Um, let's see. Who? What moveset do we want to give? I think Wolf will definitely um, be in the game. Actually, I mean, let's, let's bring it up. Emily Rogers 
you know, she's come out, and if you don't believe her now, after what she said about Pokemon, and basically, yeah, she had all that right. Like, um, she's saying that for Smash, this Smash game is going to have the best roster ever, and apparently they're going to make little to no cuts, like, barely anything. There's going to be a huge roster this time around. That's what she's saying. And it kind of goes hand in hand with what we're talking about. Like, what if they literally have every game they show off at E3, there is a Smash character announced. How insane would that be? Every single one. Um, that would just be crazy. I could see it. It'd be yeah. the... Oh, my gosh. Not only would it work so well for an announce, like, just for kind of the outline of it, it would work just perfectly. That's just the perfect outline for it. But that would be super hype. Yeah. Um, so are there any other, uh, Smash predictions we have? I, I guess I haven't really jumped into mine yet, but I, I, I think, I have a feeling Ridley's gonna be in the game, along with Silex. Um, two I characters. I really, really hope Banjo and Kazooie are in this game. If he comes out in freaking uh, what, what, I don't even remember, okay, Ukulele, I just remembered. Ukulele is in Smash, I would, I will freak out. Nope. Don't mm. want it. Need Banjo, nah. man. Ukulele was pretty disappointing, but I would like Banjo. Banjo. What if they're waiting. like, oh, this is the next big thing. We don't really want to ask Rare and Microsoft about this, so this is the next the next best thing, right? No, not even close. Okay. How cool would it be if they, uh, the day of E3, they have a Banjo-Kazooie trailer? Like, I think that would be the shock th third-party character, you know? Like, that would be the shocker that they could show off that E3, if it's real. Right. No, that's Master Chief. Remember, we already talked about no, this. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we already we carried a moveset and everything. Um, but, like, for Banjo-Kazooie, they do that, but they also announced that Banjo-Kazooie will be available to download on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Like, the original game. Maybe with, you know, I emulated in HD, right? Um, that would be great. And the, it's crazy because technically Nintendo doesn't have the rights to it, right? But maybe Nintendo could strike up a deal. We're not talking about a new Banjo-Kazooie game. We're talking about just allowing us have, to have that one game available on the eShop, right, from the N64 era. That would be great. And oh, that, could, boy. that would definitely, like, tie in sales with that game on the eShop. And Banjo-Kazooie as the character. And there'll be a lot of hype, a lot of talk. It'll be perfect. I think E3 is a perfect place for that if it's going to happen. Now, is it going to happen... No, well, I mean, you know that's what's your gonna happen. So we'll see. You know what's gonna happen is they're gonna put Fat Banjo and Kazooie in Smash. Oh and, no! And it's gonna be nuts and bolts on the eShop, boys. Oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, this I, is I the would darkest die. timeline. Uh, that that would be dude, the darkest timeline. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so bad. Yeah, yeah that'd be bad. But oh. I, I could, I think I probably mentioned this before, but I could see a cutscene where we see that, and then he like. You know, it's it's actually a fat suit, and he just takes it off. He's like, "Hey, I'm good, right?" And then it's like Banjo Kazooie joins the fray. Oh gosh, that'd be the most like from I'd be absolutely raging, and then all of a sudden I'd be just screaming in joy. So it'd just be like I I might die of two sudden emotional changes. Hmm. Okay, but here is the really important question: Do you guys think that Smash for Switch? is going to finally include the character we've all been waiting for, Waluigi. Oh! Yes, he's just gonna have a... His final smash is gonna just be a bunch of roses come down. Just, like, smack everyone in the face. Who knows? I think... <laughs> at this point, Waluigi has gotten a fair bit of characterization through memes, internet culture, you know, mm -hmm. different sports games that they could definitely come up with a pretty viable move set dude he could be there's no I, we don't really have a character and, that uses like a bunch of sports equipment do we like he'd be no. pretty unique i mean that. peach kind of with her sort of. smash but that's it there's also yeah. a wee fit trainer who throws soccer that's... balls and volleyballs yeah that's true uh, true but that's not as eh. it's, it's just not a the same bit. i'm just playing devil's advocate here right um, yeah right right but <laughs> I know people want it. I personally wouldn't mind if he didn't get into the game. Right. But I know people want it. And that's the thing. People want it, right? And considering his internet fame, Waluigi, right? And considering, you know, that people want it, like, it would create a lot of hype. And he could be a really fun and interesting character. They could be really creative with him. So, And I think Sakurai would see that. And on top of that, he was in the Sish Trophy last game, so he just has to take that 
he just he's just one leap away right from from assist trophy to full-on character so i don't think it's crazy to think that waluigi right. would be in the game you know it makes sense um so i think there's a good chance i'm honestly i'm yeah i'm expecting him to be in because i mean everyone's saying this is like going to be the ultimate roster or whatever and with i mean everyone's been wanting waluigi for so long it's it's i, I think it's pretty guaranteed yeah brandon what, what say you yay or nay mm, i'm honestly surprised he's not in smash already so i'm gonna say yay Okay, and the, what's cool about this, they could have you could have Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi fighting each other on one stage, yeah. which would be a pretty interesting scene. Actually, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I could. Yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, all right, Waluigi then. Day player Smash comes out, you could have Bowser and Peach in there as well. Yeah, and Yoshi and Donkey Kong. Yeah, because those are all technically yeah. in the Mario. Yeah. Oh, so I've heard some people suggest Captain Toad. I've heard that too, mm. and I don't know about I would, that. I, I feel like he's better as an assist trophy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There still has to be assist trophies, guys. Let's, let's not forget jump? that. Like, yeah. if every I would character... love to see him as an assist trophy. Yeah. Um, if every character becomes a character, then there won't be any assist trophies. Right. We need yeah. assist trophies. That we, we, we need the, the Robin role, the supporting Well, I guess that role. depends on how many... You know, that depends on who you ask. Cause some people are like, ah, fuck these items. No. That's that's a fair point. And I guess yeah. you could technically have an assist trophy that could also be a character. They could technically do that as well. Right. Um, technically. Technically. But... Or just a different character from the series. There's no way every character from every series. Right. Does. That's Yeah. True. That's, that's like... true. Think of my girl. Yeah. Um, so, well, I mean, it would. What's interesting? I can see Captain Toad have the you know the the blue pickaxe when he's like, oh, he just he's like using it really quickly. Like that could be his assist trophy. He gets it. And he just goes across the map and just kind of like you know, nails people. I can see yeah. something like that happening. That's true. Um, I didn't think about that. I was and, like, how would what did he do? But yeah, and if you point. use him on a platform, he falls down the same way he falls down when he falls off a platform in Captain Toad, because Captain Toad doesn't have a jump. Would he just fall the stage, then? If he gets to the end of the stage, yeah. So okay. you would have to time it. You would have to use it, you know, in a way. Or maybe he would turn around once. Maybe that's the one his one ability, to turn around once, and then he'll fall off. But, like, he's on platforms, right? Because if there's platforms, he'll just come down and continue on. I can see something right. like that happening. Yeah. That could be cool. Yeah. Um, so... Captain Toad is an assist trophy. Waluigi is a character. Ridley maybe is a character. Um, Banjo Kazooie. Do we have any? Is there any? Okay, there's one character that I want to make sure. Oh, it's not a character. It's a mode. I definitely think there should be. There's going to be an adventure mode in the Smash Bros. game. I think it was sorely missing in Smash for Wii U and 3DS. We needed an adventure mode. Bring it back. It could be some sort of combination of adventure mode from Melee and Subspace Emissary, make it quicker, more, you know, faster paced, but also, you know, still longer than the, than the original adventure mode, which is pretty short. And they could be, it could be different depending on which character you use and how that you go with the fight. So you have different endings, you get different cutscenes and interactions with the different characters. And I think it'd be really cool. People love the cutscenes, the different characters, how they interact. They can put a lot of those in this game. And depending on how you play with each character in adventure mode, you will get a different ending, getting different cutscenes, seeing different character interactions. I think it'd be really awesome. That would be awesome. That sounds like a lot of work. It does. Yeah. But apparently they've been developing and this game for like a long time. True. Hopefully Sakurai still isn't stuck in the mindset that like just because people are going to put stuff on YouTube, he shouldn't make it at all. That's the dumbest mindset. I, just... I I was really disappointed when that was his reasoning for not putting in uh, a story mode. I think his story reasoning mode. was, hey guys, we have two freaking versions. We have to have another company help us finish these two versions the way we have it right now. And we're, we already had, I think they, didn't they delay the game a couple months too? Or one of the versions? So like, they were already like hard pressed for time. I think he just came up with that and was like, eh, bleh, eh, eh, eh YouTube. I think it comes up with some really silly reasons sometimes for for why something's not in the game, right? But at the same yeah, time, he completely he's... backtracks later. Right. Well, I think you know because he's in control of everything. This is what he's feeling at that moment. He's an artist, right? Right. And he what he's feeling that makes sense creatively at one time will be different a year later. So you know, 
that gives people that with considering that perspective that gives people hope for Ridley that gives people hope for <laughs> adventure mode right so I, I think there's gonna be an adventure mode um, I think I think Sakurai is, is probably gonna get with the times this time around and there'll be an adventure mode and also another thing though Hopefully. I I don't remember where I heard it but like I think I think the implication was that this game's been in development for like three to four years uh, basically since Smash for Wii U like not too right. long after um, and on top of that they're not making a 3ds version. Right. So that'll make it easier to develop this game. They're just, yeah. They just have one version, not two, not two platforms, one platform. That would definitely help a lot, especially since I think Bandai Namco is still helping out. I think we got uh, more leaks uh, saying that they are still helping out. I think HAL Laboratory is also helping out as well this time. That is. So, because they haven't been, they haven't, didn't. I don't think they worked on Smash Wii. I think they haven't worked on it. Have they did they work on the original, or did they work on? Uh, Melee and Brawl as well. I have to go back. I only and remember, check. I only remember I know seeing that they worked on Melee. Original. I know they worked on okay. Melee. I'm not sure about Brawl. Yeah. So technically, they should have three different studios work on this one game. So yeah. Hmm. But would you? Quick question. Because if they do go on the story, what if to make the story better and to put more resources towards this story mode with all these different cutscenes? What if the actual graphics of the game are closer to them than the Wii U than you were thinking? Because they have less time to actually spiffy it up. Nope. Or would you be upset or no? Nope. Nope. The game's going to look beautiful. There's still going to be cutscenes and there's going to be an adventure mode. Right. Yep. I'm just saying, like, what in, in the universe where this happens, would you be upset? Or would you would, would you rather them worked a little harder on the graphics and had a little bit less cutscenes in the story mode? Or would that be preferred? Like, assuming they have to have one or the other like better graphics or better story mode which one would you prefer um do the graphics still get a little better i mean I, a little bit but I not like story amazingly mode. i pick it's story mode i pick story mode okay i smash for you it still looks great so yeah it still looks pretty good yeah i think sure. as well yeah absolutely i would too yeah yeah um so what other sort of modes can, do you guys think we'll get in Smash Bros? Or is it going to be basically the tag same thing? Team. We need a tag team mode. Ooh, tag team. I haven't thought about that, actually. Oh, That's... yeah. There's some, like, mods that I've played that, like, have tag team mode built in. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty cool idea. And I think it would be really cool if they added that as, a, like, an actual mode in the game. So that's that's something I'd look forward to. Right. And a lot of fighters have tag team. Um... So like it just kind of, I wonder if soccer's gonna be like nope. Every other one, everyone else does it, so we're not gonna do it. We're gonna do something yeah. else. Another cool idea. I, by the way, I I didn't make these up. I heard I a bunch it, of people said them. I think I'm you're not. taking it from Game Explain. I think I know where you're going with this. I did actually yeah. take from Game Explain. Uh, but another one that they came up with, or well, I've been thinking about these for years, but Game Explain also talked about them. But a, a mode where you have every different stock. It's a different character. Maybe you can only pick up to maybe like eight characters and it cycles through depending on how many, you know, you know, if you have more than a certain amount of stock, it just cycles back. But you have a certain amount of characters you can choose uh, up to your stock limit or whatever the limit is and then switches between them all. Like as you die, you're yeah. playing with Link, but then you die and now you're with Mario. Yeah, right? it's basically like it's all-star like... mode, but in multiplayer. Yeah, Project M did that, where they had, like, all-star mode, where you would right. pick, like, four characters, and then every stock would be a different character. Right. They have that in Smash Tour. <laughs> they have that yeah. in Smash Tour, too. they kind of do it in Smash that Tour. That, too, right? yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's an intense thing to add, right? It's just kind of, like, a setting that they have to apply. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think that's a great thing to have. Will they do it? I, I want to say yes. I, I think they would, because they want to... I mean, they already have it implemented in the game in Smash Tour, so right. it's I don't not think Smash Tour's coming add. back, so they could just take it into a new mode. It's just, here's my, here's my my fear. I want it to happen, I think it could happen, I just don't know if it'll I don't. I don't know how confident I am about it. I feel like it's super easy, so it should happen. If they don't, that's dumb. Cause well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why didn't they do it in, in Smash for Wii U when they were already implementing the concept? Because they already concept. had it in the mode, because they had it in its own mode. It was specific to that mode. It, was, uh, yeah, it made that mode the only reason anyone might ever want to play that mode. That mode, that mode is trash. And that tra that so mode is bad. scrap. It's not going to be in this game. No, definitely not. I think I might. I don't know what's. I thought there was a cat behind me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I don't think that, um... I, 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 that mode's gone. It's just gone. It's dead. It better be. It's dead. Um, I do think, however, that the wannabe Mario Party mode in Smash will be... The, I mean, that won't exist, but I think Mario Party could get an announcement at this year's E3. Yes, please. Yeah. Don't be in a car if they bring back that fucking car one more time. Oh, I'm giving up on 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 Mario Party. Yeah, I just want. I just I kind of like the idea of Mario Party 100. Um, yeah, I feel like they've been kind of going back to the the roots, or at least referencing the roots with the latest ones. Maybe they right. realize that that's what people actually want. Yeah, I, I think that's the other thing, right? Like, how long has it been since we've gotten a console Mario Party game? Probably, uh, it might, it might not even be that long. But Mario just Party 10 on the Wii U. When did that come out? Uh, I don't know. Okay, a while ago. ago. All right, it doesn't matter. Hopefully, this one has online. As uh, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I'm not sure. What, if, 2015, Smash... March 2015. Okay, that's that's a while. That's time three years. One. This Mario Party game has been in development for three years. We've been devoting all of our resources and money and time to this one game. It is our all of our stars have gone into yeah. this one. It is a swan song for us. No, um, but I, I think maybe they're taking a break from Mario Party because they realize they need to do something different with it. And the thing is, with the Switch, there's so much potential there with the Joy-Cons and the HD Rumble and the motion controls yeah. and the IR sensor. Like, they could do so, so many, much oh, with many that. games. Right. I, I want something very intensive, you know. And, yeah, bring in some of the old ones. Maybe remix the old ones as well so you could have a lot more mini games. Right. That'll be awesome and definitely should have online. That That's mm -hmm. a necessity. Absolutely. 100%. It should have online, yeah. Yeah. Um... And voice chat, but that won't happen. If it is online with no voice chat, then what's the point of online? No. Discord? I, oh. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Pedro, are you still there or did you have to take a. Step? No, sorry, I'm still here. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I would like to see a new Mario Party on the Switch. The Joy Cons with the HD Rumble could definitely. It has a lot of potential for something really cool to be done with Mario Party. Yeah. Like, imagine once you switch, but way bigger, way better with Nintendo yeah, characters and. That's exactly fun. what I was thinking. Like, yeah. once you switch. Once you switch is pretty good. I don't know how well it sold. I mean, I'm it sure it sold, sold really well. well, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somehow. I mean, I mean, I didn't buy it, so. <laughs> Over a million sales. What if instead they announced okay. 1 3 Switch? What? I, I feel one, like they switch. would just say 1 2 3 Switch. That you know? would make more sense. <laughs> that would make more sense. One three switch. Or maybe three two one switch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Again, or maybe change it up. Or maybe just Mario Party. One two switch room. Maybe they could just do Mario Party instead. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a great idea. Probably. I would much prefer that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same here. Yeah. So I I think Mario I think it's about time we get a Mario Party announcement. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if that's announced. It's not like a big game, right? So that Mario Party can come out in the same month as another game that comes, right? Like, maybe yeah. Mario Party can come out the same month as Yoshi, or Fire Emblem, or well, even Smash. It's just a smaller game that could yeah. come out. Like Devil Luke, before. actually, in the comments, says that next year is the 20th anniversary of Mario Party. Is that true? Oh. So it could come might next be. year. Might be. If that's so true, 1999, I could see that. Is 1999 the first Mario Party game? I don't know. It makes sense. Actually, uh, if my mouse will work, I could look it up. Mario Party 1... I'm googling it too. Who will Google faster? Oh no! I did 1999. No, no liar. 1998. Well, it depends. Uh, in Japan, 1998. But in U.S. and Europe, and literally everywhere else, 1999. Right. So, well, but so th here's the thing. Like they could consider the 20th anniversary this holiday. True. On December. 18th. It kind of depends. December 18th. That's when we're getting it. Hmm. I mean, th with these that anniversaries, they're never 100% spot on with the date, but they'll just be like, yeah, we're the year. Good enough. I could see that dropping yeah. in February. I could see it. Yeah, actually, February, that's a good time. Yeah, it's a good. It's a great time, actually, February. I could see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, um, <laughs> is there anything for Smash, because we went off tangent again, um, that... So anything else? We're, we're, I think we agree that we don't want the Smash Tour, right? 
or is, or, or do we have any ideas on how to make Smash Tour not bad? Uh, I think really Smash it. Tour was a doomed concept from the start, and it needs to go. It needs to die. All right, we are I mean, in agreement there. Yeah. You know it, it needs to come back? Smash, Smash Run. Run. Yes, Smash on, Run. Absolutely. Yeah, where that everyone's actually so on the fun. same map, in a bigger map and stuff. So you could actually fight each other and, like, yes. steal your steal the buffs. That'd be so cool. That'd be really awesome. I mean, like... Uh, like they could even maybe make it last longer too, right? Like they can make it a bit more grand as well, or they could have different options. And that's the thing. Smash is always about options, right? So like they could make Smash Run last a lot longer and make it more, more like Smash Marathon, or something. I mean, imagine going online with that. You know, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I'm t I had something in my head, but it, it slipped my mind. I'm trying to think. Oh no, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone forever. Damn it. Oh, you know what? They need to bring back Target Break. I didn't like what they had in Smash yes. for Wii U. That was just, eh. I want Target Break back. Oh yeah, break, break the targets. Also, landing right. on the platforms, I like. I, I really missed that one as well. Oh, that was really cool. Board the platforms. Yes. That was, that was really cool. Yeah. Bringing those back would be awesome. Yeah. And race to the finish. Race to the finish was also pretty cool. They they could do more yeah. of that because it wasn't race to the it finish. It was weird only in melee though. In classic. In melee, there was like it was super easy because I play. I don't know maybe. Oh, race I to played the that game. You could just like go to the first one. It was like five feet away. It was like ah, oh, you win. Yeah, but you get less points. So. The idea is that you go win. to the farthest one possible. Yeah, I feel like get those are just. just Close. It should make at least the first goal should be farther away. It's like right there. Yeah, that was a little silly, but I guess it's supposed to like trip up people and then they like go into it and then it's like, oh, but that wasn't the real finish. But you you still progress anyway, so like yeah, it's like I, kinda, I see what you're talking about. Hmm. It's like easy mode. You get to choose your difficulty. All right. Um, is there any other Smash projects we want to make before we move on? It's going to be called Super Smash Brothers Battle Royale. Oh! 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 Oh, oh, oh man! Oh, my goodness! Oh, God. Um, maybe. No, I don't think so. I don't think you think so either. Nintendo I don't think so either. Actually, they're not that mainstream. Because, I, because people were saying this is going to, like, those apparent, like, leaks or whatever like say it's the ultimate smash brothers roster i wouldn't be surprised if it's super smash brothers ultimate that's not a bad name it's not bad but in all in all realisticness it's probably just going to be super smash brothers for switch yeah maybe they could also just slap a five on there yeah maybe they could get extra lazy yeah extra well I feel like Super adding Smash a number Brothers. is something they've never done before. So, but, you know, like, in a way, it wouldn't be. But what if they make a play on five? What if they do something like, I was thinking, like, if they make oh, the five, five look like an characters. S. No. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Actually, they could say Super Smash Bros. V. I, I saw Devaluki actually Versus. call it that. Or they could 85. go the, the Call of Duty route and make it Super Smash Brothers. I, 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 I. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Could be Super Smash Bros. V S versus because five, but it's Ooh. V. Oh. Okay. Oh. It's a play they on could make the S look itself. like a five too. They could. I yes. heard. I don't know where it was. I heard, but I heard there's supposed to be kind of like a de like a bad guy versus good guy sort of theme with this game. So what? We it, need a lot more bad guys. <laughs> Well, there is a rumor list. I don't know where, I remember where it came from. This is all rumor, guys. So, like, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But, like, I heard, like, King K. Rule, along with Simon Belmont, yeah, and Ridley, yeah. you know, Gino. Like, so there was some, there was some, there were some big names there. Um, but, like, I'm just kind of, like, thinking about it. Like, that would kind of go hand in hand with your versus idea. Because if it's, like, good versus evil and it's more about mm -hmm. a, a versus, I guess that would kind of work. Um... I, I feel like they want to go for something unique, though, right? And I feel like, you know, not that Ultimate or Versus aren't great names, but I wonder if Sakura's be like, nope, that's been done before. Let's try something else. Right. You know? Um, Ultimate, I think, 
Maybe. I just like the fact that the first is like the V is five and the S. Like yeah. that makes it unique just because of the mm. premise. It does. That, but yeah, oh, on, what on if the they surface, put the V and the five on top of each other? I don't know. Yeah, like I see what you're saying with that. It's both V is five and five is yeah, like and it's S. Like yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even realize it when you said it. Actually, that makes too much sense. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be a cool logo somehow. Uh, it... I'm holding out for Super Smash Brothers kerfuffle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kerfuffle. Yeah. We've been waiting on that one for a while. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Or fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. I'm, I'm just gonna go for... I'm just gonna go... Oh, man, I don't know. Actually? Mm. No, you know what it's gonna be called? It's gonna be called Super Smash Brothers Upgrade Wii U in 3DS version. Because <laughs> it's just gonna be a port. Sign me a new game. Sign me yeah. Smash 5. Let's uh, go Super Smash Brothers Switch. Oh, <laughs> no. Play with Smash Go. Oh, you, no. you run around the world collecting Smash characters. There's only 50, though. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, it suck. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I, you I, could I, capture shiny versions of just awesome no, costumes. It, no. No. <laughs> I, I need a name for this. I'm trying to come I can't pick something in my head. I can't pick it. Mine was too, too awesome. Yeah, it was. It was too awesome. Smash... Done. Uh, <laughs> this is the final Smash Brothers again. <laughs> Smash done. I don't know. Um, Smash. S Smash. Well, I think they can make a play on the five and have an S. S they. Okay. You know how you guys said Super Smash Bros for Nintendo Switch, right? What if they take out the four? And the S looks like a five. It's a Super Smash Bros Switch, and the S is a five. Because they said oh. they went for Super Smash Bros. Mm. 4, Wii U, and 3DS, right? The 4 was also 4. Like, it wasn't shaped like that, but it was also, whenever you said Smash 4, right. you were also saying the number 4. So for I Switch, they could just say Super Smash Bros. Switch, just scrap the 4, right? But the S in the Switch also looks like a 5. Right. Which is really simplistic, but at the same time, it's also subtle. Kind of like the same thing for Smash for Wii U and 3DS. Yeah, it was so subtle, I didn't even know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's that's what I'm sticking with. But ultimate and verses are also great ideas. And kerfuffle is the best one. Fisticus coming in second. Yeah. Thank you. I know I'm a genius. Yes, you are. <laughs> Mad genius. Um, yeah. So uh, let's let's see what's going on with the chat. Um, yeah, Red Scraggy. It's June 12th. So next Tuesday is Nintendo's presentation. You'll start seeing a whole bunch of new Nintendo stuff on that day. What's up, So Ham? Hey, Fad Taz and Wolves. What's up, No Filter? Got a lot of people in the chat today. Arushan, what's up, bro? Victory. Oh, I like that idea, Victory 19. They could have minigame levels based off franchises. Example, Metroid, Destroy All Places, All Space Pirates in One Minute, or Mario Collect All Mushrooms Before Time Runs Out. That's a really neat idea. I actually like that. That would be... I could see that, actually. Um, so then... Uh, so... Yeah, that'd be really cool. Is it my turn for predictions? I don't remember. I think, I think it's actually my turn because I haven't gone again yet. I haven't gone again. I haven't gone. But I was first. But so. I haven't gone. Right? You haven't gone at all? I don't think I have. Although, because I'm moderating, I've kind of been suggesting stuff throughout. That's the thing. Okay. Um, Pedro, we're, I guess you were giving your Smash predictions. Do you have any other predictions for Smash or, or, or are you good? Other predictions? Um, Not really. I don't think there's anything else I've got to say. Yeah. I I'll mean, other than, than like, later, but for now. I imagine they'll add another Fire Emblem character, whether it's from oh the new one for the Switch or if they'll add one right. from Echoes. Add somebody, you know. like, that's not a sword character. Yeah. Hector. Well, Hector's got an axe, and he's the best. Uh, yeah. What if we get someone with a lance on a dragon or something? Yeah. I think that I would be have... a little... I mean... You look at Fire Emblem Heroes, and they're, one of the most popular characters in that game is uh, Reinhardt, who is a guy on a horse, and he's got magic mm -hmm. and a sword. Yeah. Maybe we could have somebody, we could have him riding on a horse. But, but what if he's Just too big? imagine how that would be. What if he's too big? <laughs> what if he's too big? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. Actually, uh, we could transition this into, well, 
All right, Brandon, if you want to go next, I guess I've been saying I mean, a lot you of stuff. Gone. Yeah, I, so you should... I guess, technically I haven't gone, but I've been suggesting a lot of stuff as we go. That's um, true. Because, I mean, like, you know, if you're going to bring up Animal Crossing, I'm going to give you my Animal Crossing predictions, right? If you're going to bring up Smash Bros., I'm going to bring up my Smash predictions. Uh, I'm going to talk about a, a third-party game. I think Fortnite's going to be show officially shown off by Nintendo at the third at the digital presentation. Uh, and I think we talked about this on Twitter. Right, I think Fortnite's going to be there. I think it's going to be available shortly after E3. Uh, so you can play, download the Battle Royale mode for free. I think on the Switch version... It's going to look and run pretty close to the PS4 and Xbox One versions. There will be minimal differences. I think it's going to have HD rumble. So they're going to take advantage of the HD rumble. So you're actually going to be able to feel like the footsteps and stuff when you're moving around. In Fortnite, when you're playing, like you really have to pay attention to like the sound for like footsteps and stuff like that. So you can hear people around you. They'll use the HD rumble to give you even more tactile feedback. So you have a better like sense of your surroundings. There will be gyro aiming. So you can have quicker aiming if you want. That You can turn it off if you want as well. But gyro aiming will be available. On the Switch version, there will be online play because otherwise it wouldn't be Fortnite, um, you know. But voice chat, I think they'll probably stick with the with the app on the smartphone. But I think somehow they'll make it less no. terrible. On, that's what I think they're gonna do. Um, and uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of Nintendo costumes available via like you know that purchases with cosmetics. There might be a couple available immediately, but a lot of it's gonna be something you purchase. The game is free to play, right? And I had this crazy idea, but this is more like speculation rather than prediction. What if they had a second map to download for Battle Royale, but you have to buy that one, like maybe like $10. But this map is based off like Nintendo franchises. Like there's a there's a Luigi's Mansion area for the spooky area, right? There are mushrooms instead of tires to bounce on, right? Like there's a Hyrule Castle. There's a, there's a you know, Peach's Castle. Like the, maybe there's like a, where the woods is actually more like the jungle for Donkey Kong. Maybe they have jet skis for Wave Race. Maybe instead of carts, they have like little like scooters from Mario Odyssey. They gotta have a whole bunch of like little Nintendo elements in this map. That would be crazy. Probably not gonna happen. It's just pure speculation, right? The other stuff are my actual predictions though for this game. Yeah. Right, right. I think that all sounds awesome, except the online app. I really don't. I really hope there's not an online app. Let's be real here. That suck. I don't think anybody, not even Nintendo, uses the online app for anything but Splatoon. Even though we're technically this weird trial run, like they don't even offer developers the option to try and work with it at all. Like other developers is have it, been like, is yeah, it them not to... offering, or do they just not want to do it because it's trash? Other, other, well, no, other companies have said, hey, I was gonna put oh. the, you know, I was gonna use the online app, but Nintendo wouldn't let me. Like, like I think, uh, I don't remember. It was somebody, maybe it was Bethesda who said that. Somebody released an online game. They were like, we're going to put voice chat in, but Nintendo was like, ah, no. <laughs> so I wonder if they're just going to ditch the this stupid the, the online app. I mean, it's like they don't mention it on the front page. You have to, like, go and scroll down and, like, find it. And then they only ever mention Splatoon 2. Yeah, I feel like... Not... I feel like it's just not going to... I feel like the, maybe they'll have, still have an option, but it's not going to be the main way. You think they'll have an another thing built-in game they might have game by game they may not have a full you know like overarching like system-wide voice chat but maybe they'll have like a game by game like the developer can put voice chat in the game if they want it yeah i just don't know i'm so confused why they haven't really even had an option for it I just i don't get it it doesn't make sense to me i don't understand why they don't even have something it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, right? But this is Nintendo. They don't always make sense. It's unfortunate. Uh, but actually, I'm, I'm saying, I see how No Filter is talking about how he likes the online app as a companion. You can check on game standings, resources, etc. Yes. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. But yeah, if they did that with more games, it'd be really, really cool, right? Maybe just check on the leaderboards, you know? Like, for example, for Smash, maybe, like, they have leaderboards for target break and jump on the platform and your classic high score or your adventure mode high score, like, and there could be, yeah, they could have, like, leaderboards for all of that. And It'd be and, great for Fortnite because you could see, like, you know, like in Splatoon, you can see, like, your kills and your death ratio, your wins and losses, your kills and all kinds of different stuff on there from your previous games. I'd love to do that in Fortnite as well, see how many kills I got in the last match. Maybe see how many assists I got, see how much my accuracy was. Because they have, like, the stats, but you 
you can only see them if you stay in the game and then it's like they're gone like they don't exist anymore once you leave you can't ever see them again so if you can see like your average window loss ratio and stuff like that your average accuracy all that good stuff that'd be really cool it would be will it happen maybe maybe i mean like when nintendo first like showed it off like i feel like that was supposed to be the idea right that's supposed to be the right. idea. It's a companion app that offers you information about your game on the fly, on the go. Like, the Switch app, it doesn't. It may not be the best option, but they could definitely make it a lot better, right? Like, they could design the Switch app so you can do voice chat through it, but you don't have to be in the app to actually be on the phone. You know, they could use your Wi-Fi, it doesn't waste your data in that way. It can, they could find ways so it doesn't consume battery that much. They could redesign the app. They could be smarter about it. They could, you know, really uh, open it up for everyone to use, have all the companion stats. Like, this doesn't have to be the worst thing ever, right? Maybe it's not the best situation compared to what we have on PlayStation and Xbox, but it could still be a lot better. And it could be unique in its own way as well. My thing is just, like, in order to hear the game and the voice chat from your phone... You have to like have a million different wires and adapters and stuff. Well, they need to, to fix get that. It. Yeah, they need I to mean, fix that. I don't know how they would unless they streamed the audio to your phone as well. But what if they be, have... evidently it'd be delayed at least a little bit. What if they like launched like a Bluetooth headset? You know that that they you sync with your both at the same time. Yeah, and that's all why it's all wireless. That... I would be down with that. Yeah, it's not. I don't think it's fine. hard to I do. Would, and I wouldn't mind that get, at all. They make more money because they they have an official headset for people to buy, right? And people will get I'm it because if it promised decent voice chat, you know, as long as you have a phone and you have a Wi-Fi connection, which you probably would if you're playing online, then you know it would be fine. I think it'd be minimal issues. Yeah, it wouldn't be as good as just plugging it into your switch and right. Playing but now. the thing is, is that the headphone jack is in the switch. Yeah. when it's docked and their controllers True. don't have a headphone jack which is dumb it's dumb uh but oh well it's just the way it is they could also launch a new controller that has a better d-pad and a headphone jack True. they could do that it's another option as well so then yeah i guess you know, we basically went over my fortnite predictions uh is there anything you guys want to add to that pedro brandon or brandon or brandon move on to your next prediction I don't got anything to add. Okay. No, yeah. I think you pretty, pretty much covered it, yeah. Alright, so let's see. You're up, Brandon. I go for. Hmm. Okay. I am predicting. This is a 2019 prediction. That Pikmin 4 will be shown off at E3, and it'll be an early 2019 title. We've got a lot of early 2019 stuff. Well, I can you think that, Animal yeah. Crossing? You see, you see, Animal Crossing is a holiday title, so I guess yeah. that makes a little more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Pikmin Four will be a summer title, and oh. yeah, that'd be nice. I don't know if it'll be shown up this year though. It's not in my predictions for for this year, actually. Okay. But I, I mean, I would love to see. It. I would love to see Pikmin Four. That thing's been in development forever. Like, yeah, yeah, like that. That's something that could totally happen. I mean. I wonder how good it'll look. Because I feel like the, the Pikmin really 3, good. correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Pikmin 3 started off as a Wii title. It did. It did. Because there was never a Pikmin game on the Wii. They were always talking about it, so they were working on it, and we didn't get see it, and then, then we got the Wii U. And it just, it, it looks, while well, it looks good, it does look like, you know, it could have been better. Mm -hmm. I yeah. thought the game looked really good. Honestly, it probably is the best water of, like, any game. In existence those ripple effects are on point yeah, but yeah i can totally see what you say uh like there's some stuff they could do the textures are kind of you can tell they're just hg versions of wii textures yeah. i mean they do have a lot of textures and there's more models that i think wouldn't have been on the wii one obviously they reworked a lot of stuff but it definitely wasn't up to the wii u's potential so like this could have been a Pikmin game that was in, in, you know, in development for the Wii U, but I feel like they would have scrapped the Wii U version pretty early on. Yeah, but I also working. think that the different, the jump from Wii U to, to Switch, right? Like, if you have the time, right? Whatever you're doing on Wii U, just by upping the resolution, the frame rate, and the texture quality, maybe the lighting engine. That's you know, kind of what you could expect in terms of differences between right. the Wii U and a Switch game, anyways. Yeah. 
But I think it would have looked really, really good on the Wii U. I mean, I thought Pikmin 3 looked absolutely no, I gorgeous. No, still, I, still, I still think it looked gorgeous. I'm just saying I, I could tell yeah. that oh, it yeah, started I could off as a Wii title. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if sure. one builds up, even if it was built up for the ground up for the Wii U and they ported over the Switch, I think that would look really, really it good. Would. Yeah, it would, for sure. And I think they could definitely bring back the pointer controls with the because of the Joy-Cons. Yes. Right? That would be yeah. great. You won't have to worry about the gamepad anymore. Um, Oof, that, that was annoying. <laughs> Yeah, it was annoying. Uh, and I think they could definitely have online play in the game, right? There, there was some pretty cool challenge and co-op modes mm-hmm. in Pikmin Honestly, 3. the Wii U, the gamepad was the reason I stopped playing that game. <laughs> Same for me. Um, yeah, it was just annoying. I did love having the camera and seeing the Pikmin up close. So maybe mm-hmm. they could offer that as a feature, you know, without the second screen. Maybe you could, you know, you just have it as, a, as another option. Just press a button so you can look up close and see things in that way be really awesome because it, it was really cool seeing the pigment up really close like you could see the, the attention to detail even when you zoom in like that which i thought was really cool and they could do something like that in in pigment 4 so bring that back that feature but bring it back in a way where it's not as annoying where you have to look down on your gamepad and then you know be doing stuff right. while you don't see what's happening on screen at the yeah. top i definitely think this game was in development originally for the wii u just because i mean wouldn't we hear about it like oh, for 20 ago. 2016 even Early. like it was like done for forever ago like that was obviously had to have been made for the wii u i think they've been working on it this entire time it's been like to build years. it up to spec yeah to to the switch um so i i definitely think it will look a lot better than it would have on the wii u but i definitely think it's starting off as a wii u title i don't think there's any there's pretty much no debating that i don't think yeah i feel like they didn't have the switch in mind when they started that game because it was almost done forever ago but I, I want to go back to the date you were picking for. What date? You said you were picking early 2019, right? Right, right. Before or after the fiscal year ends? Uh, before. Probably like uh, March. Just March. Like, or I guess the March, it ends like really early March. So probably yeah. like right after I ended. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I see I see Animal Crossing uh, coming out early 2019 before the fiscal year. I see Pikmin 4 coming out summertime um, in 2019. It could. Yeah. A big time for um, yeah the, re- the the main there's a reason why our, our, our dates are, are a little different um, we'll get to that soon soon but I'll give you a hint pay attention to the music but anyways um I wish I could hear this hint Ben Jenner drift <laughs> okay yeah um so are, are we is there anything else you want to add for Pikmin four yeah I guess there's not really many mechanics or anything I can really predict so. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to predict the game is going to come out. We're going to see it probably soon, at least. I have, I, one more thing probably to add. Up I have one more thing to add. I think what? in portable mode, you'll be able to play with the touchscreen. I won't care for oh, yeah. that, but I think For they'll sure. have that option. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Yeah. So they'll have standard controls, they'll have pointer motion controls, and they'll have touch controls. They'll have several different right. options to play. Yeah. So I think that's all going to be available. So, cool. Um... Uh, Pedro, have anything to add to that? No, I don't really have much to add. I agree with y'all's like speculation about Pikmin. It's not really my specialty, so. I, I feel you. But uh, um, are you ready for your next prediction? Um. You're a little low, by the way. I'm not sure if you're away from your your microphone. Oh, my volume? Yeah, it's a little low. Oh. Um. Does that fix it? Anna? Yeah, it sounds better now. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, have we already talked about uh, good old the the rumored Star Fox racing game? We have not. not we haven't gone to we it yet. Not. No. So, I guess that should be our next uh, topic yeah. of conversation. Then. Actually, your timing's great because the Star Fox music just started on the playlist too. <laughs> yeah, well, the nice. timing Perfect. is flawless. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to say about it? Um, I I think it's very plausible that that could be a thing. Okay. Um, don't know exactly if it's going to be. I mean, apparently it's not supposed to be exactly like F Zero, but it's supposed to be more like how Star Fox typically is. Mm-hmm. I would kind of, I kind of want it to be more like F Zero. Frankly, I just want a new F Zero game. But right. Yeah. Uh, this is cool too. Yeah, I, I actually. And I don't have much information about it, so I'm sure you guys have plenty more to say than I do. Okay, well, I actually made a video about the Star Fox game yesterday. Um, 
posted a little late though. But I, yeah, I posted a video about Star Fox and I gave all my predictions for Star Fox. I think this game is going to be at E3. I think we're getting a reveal for it. And there are some rumors going around about it, right? And um, I think it's not really like F-Zero at all. I think it's going to be its whole other thing. Yeah. I think that F-Zero will come eventually to the Nintendo Switch, but we will not be seeing it this year. So unfortunately, but we will, that's, so it just won't be there. But I think Star Fox will be. It will have racing mechanics, but I think the it's going to be a hybrid um you know kind of like how retro studios combined the the old style of 2d metroid combined it with a first person shooter they combined two different genres and created a new genre right. the first person adventure i think they're gonna do something similar here with this star fox game i think they're gonna combine racing with flying and space combat and they're gonna you know merge it into one and create a new genre right it's going to feel fresh it's going to feel new i think it's going to be a lot a huge narrative focus this time around i think they're, they're, the rumors say this can be exploration of hub worlds i think we'll be able to talk to slippy and falco in the hangar of the great fox there may even be a little city where the grand prix is sort of centered around that you can explore as well maybe they're doing it because they're they're enter the grand prix because they're on a mission to find someone who's hidden in there which is why at the end of every grand prix as rumor says there's a boss fight because there's some sort of internal conflict going on there and that's why they're working or entering the grand prix because they're on a mission to find the culprit of it all that's that's my that's my sort of like theory on it but i definitely think star fox is going to be showing off at this year's e3 for sure yeah, right. and I would say there's a 50% chance that Star Fox is coming out this year, and I'll give I'll tell right. you why it's a 50% chance later, but 50% chance. If you watched my Star Fox video, you would know why, but that's all I'm gonna say for now. Right. Yeah, I mean Liam Robertson was kind of like uh, he he had a bunch of info on it. He I think he was the one who gave us the uh, way more detailed look on how it plays and stuff, and he was like, I've I've heard it's it's slated for 2019, but he said he could see it coming out in 2018 so i'm not sure if that what it means by that maybe he saw the game in action he was like oh this looks really done so i could see it coming out this year but supposedly from his sources said that it's planned to be coming out next year so i don't i don't know why he but he said personally he thinks it could come out 2018 he didn't give a reason though so um i mean you get to speculate like i feel like you know when you're getting internal like inside information right from a product that's not even announced yet plans are still changing they're still not entirely sure what they're going to do with it it may come out earlier i guess it kind of depends um on that the thing is that maybe it's almost ready and it comes down more to what other games or other games are are at with their development cycles and they have to decide which one they put a focus on right because nintendo is pacing themselves right they're trying to get out at least one nintendo published product a month so you know that doesn't mean that they they don't publish a game immediately when it's done you know seems like that sometimes but they do have to pace themselves they do have to sort of hold back or speed things up so that could be part of why he may be hearing that it also could just be false information but you know um i do think this game is real right yeah. i don't think it's real for yeah i agree uh i think it's probably more likely that it'll come out like uh 20 it's probably gonna be early 2019 i don't think it's gonna come out this year okay I, I could definitely see that. For me, it's either it's either like October or December this year, or it's a it's a late 2019 title next year. It's one or the other for me. Okay. Yeah, I could easily see it being shown off, right? Having an epic trailer, kind of like Yoshi. Although I don't know if I wouldn't say I wouldn't say Yoshi's trailer would, would be as epic as this. And then we don't see or hear anything about it until E3 next year, or it's coming out this year and it's going to be playable at the show floor of the Treehouse. Um, you know, it, it really comes down to the pre- this, the uh, this other game that, I, that I'm thinking about. And I'll get to that in a moment, but I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. I actually Metroid. don't think it no. would be coming out. Like, I'm looking at the different release dates for Star Fox. Like, they've all come out February or April. Oh, I mean, that, that it could maybe it is like a mid-2019 title. Yeah, I mean, Star Fox 64 was April 27th, 1997. Especially... Star Fox- yeah. The original was in February. Zero was in April. Uh, so, yeah. So and guard actually, to thing. that point, um, if Star Fox it has this racing element in it, it could be have more of a competitive play, multiplayer, and, you know, big multiplayer games. Nintendo tends to sort of release them toward, around the mid-year, right? Like, right. look at Splatoon. So, look at ARMS. So, ooh, yeah, that could yeah. be a thing. Late spring, maybe. early summer. Yeah. That's that actually could, around the time. It could be that, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
yeah, I would see that. Uh, what do you guys think about how the game's gonna play, though? Like, we've already compared Diddy Kong Racing, and I talked to him about my video yesterday, how, like, the same way, like, in Star Fox Zero, how the Arwen can change it to a Walker, or how the Landmaster can change it to a Grabmaster, they would sort of employ that mechanic into Star Fox Racing as well, which would also compare it to Diddy Kong Racing, because in Diddy Kong Racing, you would change between a cart to an airplane to a little, like, floating, like a submarine or something like that, right? Like, what if they do something similar in this game? So you're changing vehicles depending on the environment as you race through. I could right. easily see that, and it would look really cool, man. It'd be really cool to be in the R-Wing, then drop into R into Walker mode when I'm, like, speeding through, like, a giant raptor, just kind of tearing through things. Like, that would just be awesome. I can see that. I think that's a really, really good idea. Yeah. Um, Diddy Kong Racing did it first. <laughs> yeah. And also there's a Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed, which might be even a better uh, like comparison for this game. They do that too. Okay. Yeah. This is cooler than Star Fox, so, you know, instantly cooler. Instantly cooler. We've also heard the game will be really pretty. Which, oh gosh it's gonna be really yeah. pretty but i mean they, they the thing is the star fox like that's what kind of star fox we used to be about like when star fox came out on the super nintendo it was like the first nintendo game to actually have polygons in it 3d graphics right, right? this and then on star fox on the n64 like that game, that was, game a, it was an intense it looking game on the N64. yeah so star fox used to be about pushing graphics right for nintendo games and star fox zero Looked like an HD N64 game. Like, it was so bad. <laughs> yeah. It almost looked like a, a high resolution texture pack of uh, Star Fox 64 3D. Yeah, I mean, there was I mean, obviously there was something that more one advanced. stage that actually looked good. The kind of like purpley pink stage with like the plants and stuff. That one looks good. Like like the plants that would just bite up like the flight. They looked like Venus flytraps plants. Yeah. So, like, that stage actually looked good, but every other stage in the game looked like hot garbage. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else else we want to add for Star Fox? See what you guys are saying in the chat, unless there's anything you guys want to add now for Star Fox. No, I don't know much. Pedro, is, is this, could this be your ideal Star Fox game? Um, uh, I don't know. Not, not sure yet. Yeah, um, we, I, we really don't know much about it yet. I, I'm looking forward to it because I just really like Star Fox, but, um, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to see what it is and hope it's Yeah, good. I have hope but, because uh, Retro Studios is supposedly working on it and everything yeah. they touch is gold. So <laughs> I'm confident. And also I think it's going to be an opportunity to actually get new story for a Star Fox game. Right? Because Star Fox, the original, and Star Fox 64 and Star Fox Zero are all the same story, essentially. So it would be really cool to actually get, like, an actual progression for these characters. I think that hopefully we see something like that for this game. So let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Uh, I hate to, hate to be the... Well, actually, I mean, I'm not interrupting anything, but I gotta drop out right now. Oh. But uh, it was good talking to y'all good discussion wish i could be on for longer but all right man uh take care pedro thanks for coming yeah all right yeah. good night man see you good night guys all right so um let's let's move on uh let's see i was reading that uh Hedge has a wolf saying that falcon wolf need new final smashes pikachu with an iron tail special king ddd with a with a muscle ddd final smash i think those are all great yes. ideas all great ideas. I love Pikachu with an iron tail, actually. And I definitely agree that Fox and Falco, not Fox, but Falco and Wolf, need new Final Smashes. They shouldn't just get different colored, like, landmasters that last for different amounts of time or have better. Oh my like, gosh. It should, be, yeah. it should be different. Like, Falco could be, like, our wing support, right? Wolf could be maybe the Wolfen, right, that we saw in Star Fox Zero. And then Fox could still maybe be a landmaster, you know, because we'll be changing Fox and Wolf. Fox will be changing Falcos and Wolves, so I could see that for sure. And with that, I also think Wolf could be making a comeback this time around. So we didn't really, really we didn't really address that earlier. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could come back. I could see. Yeah. So um, what was I gonna say? Don't we know. just talked about Star Fox. 
Um, right. While you're I... thinking of that, I could bring up another comment I saw. Yeah. All right, so it actually, it's from the same. But Phantasm Wolf is like on a roll with the awesome comments in the chat. Um, so he says, I think if they were bringing back custom moves, uh, I think they should bring in custom final smashes, for example, Supersonic, Werehog, or Cyper or Hypersonic. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Oh. I'm just like. Because so, I feel like a lot of times you get a Final combat? Smash on a character and it just, like, sucks. Or yeah. you don't really prefer it as much. Or, you you know, you'd like something a little different. So I feel like there could be multiple options. Custom Final Smashes. I mean, I had a idea where maybe they could just have multiple Final Smashes. Like, when right. you get the Final Smash, depending on how you press B, it's a little different. Um, I think this would work really well for Breath of the Wild Link, right? Because, like, they, let's say one of them is, like, you know, as lot, like you even suggested, like a lot, that they have the 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 heroes like attack with the lasers, right? Uh, right. In the, against the castle, that could be one. Another could be using the ancient arrow. That could be another. Yeah. You know, like That's a good idea. they could have multiple multiple ones. Mario, one could be maybe the Tyrannosaurus Rex, while the other one is just the fire wave. That's a possibility. You know, I could I can see each character having at least two final smashes, actually, in a lot mm -hmm. of other games. A lot of other fighters have multiple specials, so it would be interesting, especially if they like balanced out the specials in a way where they could still somehow be considered for like the tournament play or something, right? And, or at least popular enough where most people still have it on, because a lot of people like turning it off. It'd be cool if they could make that still be kind of a mainstay for most people. And yeah. then, you know, each final smash you have is kind of beneficial depending on the situation, right? Like, another actual potential for, for, for Link, right, is maybe one final smash could be Mifa's Grace where you heal, like, 100 or something like that. And that, that seems a little broken. Maybe, like, 80. Oh my gosh. But you would heal. You would heal, you know? Like, that could be a final smash. Like, maybe you want to survive mm -hmm. longer rather than try to take the people out, I think. That's, that's a, a really good idea. Yeah. Um, that's possibilities. But, you know, do you think they could be coming... But back with custom moves, actually. Um, I think they could. I don't see why not. Yeah, I hope they're all unlocked by the, in the beginning, though, or unlocked by something that's not annoying, like Smash Door. <laughs> like I don't want to play Smash Door to unlock these things. <laughs> yeah. Like no. Um, so um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on with my prediction list because I have a few. So, I'm trying to decide. Let's run through the third party stuff. I want to run through one of my third party predictions now. Do you huh? have any third party predictions you want to do as well? Uh, I does does indie games count? Maybe. Because I don't. I don't, literally do not care about most big third party games. All right. Well, then I'll just run through mine. I think we're gonna see Dragon Ball Fighters, which goes along with that Fortnite leak. Uh, um, I think there's gonna be a Fallout game of some for some sort on Switch. We're definitely gonna see Bethesda support. I guess the question is what? Fallout 76 has not been confirmed for the Nintendo Switch, so I wonder if that game is not coming to the Switch. I would like to see it. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see the announcement for it, but maybe right. uh, maybe it'll come later. But I feel like if you don't announce it with it, then this is I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, Wolfenstein 2, I think, when it was announced, was it announced for all three systems? No. I think it, it had already been announced before. Like, in <laughs> e it had been announced, like, the 20s. I think it was announced in 2016. So, it wasn't announced for the Switch until late 2017. So, it had already been announced. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I remember oh, whatever well I hopefully Fallout 76 or some sort of Fallout games comes I think something for Bethesda will be announced at E3 for the Nintendo Switch I already said Dragon Ball Fighters I think this game might come with the DLC which means I'll, uh, if there's $100 to spend on Dragon Ball Fighters already I could maybe I don't know what I'm gonna do maybe I just won't get the Switch version and if it comes to all the DLC why did you buy it digitally no I I, was, I, I realized that, that I might have to sell it because of the Switch version you could so. sell it Maybe. Did you have the Best Buy Gamers Club, or did you not get no. that before it was done? No, no. Yeah, they got rid of it, so you, you're just screwed. We'll see. Maybe I'll trade my, my PS4 version with someone who doesn't want their Switch anymore. Um, so, Dragon Ball Fighters, I think, will come, probably with the DLC. I think Beyond Good and Evil 2, even if it's not, even if it's not actually at Nintendo's present, it will be. When is Ubisoft's presentation? Is it before Nintendo's? 
Good luck. Because depending yeah. on, I th I think it is, but I I want to double check. I don't want to you know it's say green. something that's wrong. Because <laughs> uh, I think I I I think we're gonna see some some it's stuff. Before. It's okay. on to Perfect. eleventh. Perfect. So we're gonna see two Nintendo Switch games that people are gonna be like, oh wow, that's coming from Ubisoft. One of which being Beyond Good and Evil Two. It's a multi-platform game, so it's not just on Switch, but it's Beyond Good and Evil. Beyond Good and Evil 2 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Another game that will be announced for the Nintendo Switch from Ubisoft will be an exclusive. Red Steel 3. They will bring that back. It will be fit perfectly because of the Joy-Cons. It will be the best sword fighting game we've ever seen. It will be better than Red Steel 1. It will be better than Red Steel 2 coming to the Nintendo Switch. When is it coming? I, I don't have no idea. I'm going to say next year. But it will be announced. We'll see a trailer for it. Okay. Yeah. I've never played the Red Steel game before. Well, you're going to play Red Steel 3 on the Nintendo Switch. Telling you that right uh, now. Nice. Uh, actually, they could even that. like announce like HD an HD Red Steel One Two port um, with better joy like Joy-Con controls for this year for and if, if especially Red Steel Three is coming next year. This is just you know, right. I I think we think we're gonna see something Red Steel related at E Three or at least yeah. some other Ubisoft exclusive game for Nintendo. If it's not Red Steel, it'll be something else from Ubisoft. It'll be exclusive. I think that's happening. And the the last other uh, third party game that I think we may see from not Ubisoft just in general will be a, a Grand Theft Auto port. I think we're gonna get Grand Theft Auto ported to the Switch. That that seems like a good idea on their part. I mean, at this point, like Grand Theft Auto sells so freaking well all the time that the Grand Theft Auto Five I think is shoe in port. Uh, it might come next year though, just because I hear they're waiting for the sixty four gigabyte cards which are coming next year so we could see it this e3 announced for next year yeah yeah for sure so um i guess just to round it out my third party predictions overall right so i predicted fortnite earlier there'll be a nintendo cosmetics that you can buy it'll have gyro controls and hd rumble a fallout game will be announced for nintendo switch i don't know if it'll be a remake or if it'll be fallout 76 but based off what you were saying brandon i guess there's still hope for fallout 76 hopefully i think dragon ball fighters will be coming and it will have the DLC coming with it as well, but there will be a season two that will be announced and that will not be available. You have to pay for that separately. Beyond Good and Evil 2 will be announced for the Nintendo Switch along with other platforms at this year's E3. I think a Red Steel 3 game is in the works, and if not Red Steel 3, some other sort of Ubisoft exclusive for the Nintendo Switch, and the Grand Theft Auto port will be coming as well. That Those are my major third party predictions. Actually, if all that comes, it's pretty intense, actually. Right. Um, See, like for me, it's all about the exclusives. Like, if you don't either get an exclusive or get some kind of content that makes me want to get it on the Switch and not on my PC, I'm just going to get it on my PC. So, like, hopefully we get in here, we, get, we see, like, Nintendo-themed DLC, as you were saying, for Fortnite, an exclusive Ubisoft game. Like, that kind of stuff, I'd be like, yeah, nice, third parties doing some stuff that I actually want to buy. Like, if they were here and announced, you know, like, some more just ports of stuff that are going to look way better on my PC and run way better... I'm just like, eh, 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 whatever. Yeah, I think for the Dragon Ball Fighters game, they're going to have it in a trailer. And, like, remember how last year they had, like, a trailer for FIFA and Rocket League along with a couple other games? And they showed off, like, the the Joy-Cons, how you could use them, like, for, like, local multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Those are the exact same thing in an other, like, little, like, you know, montage trailer with Dragon Ball Fighters. There'll be two people who will pull out the Joy-Con and play Dragon Ball Fighters on a subway or something like yeah th i think that's literally gonna happen again with dragon ball fighters you can see that and i want what i want them to do is have all the dlc from season pass one and then and then also include two extra characters that are like uh, no that's this is crazy they'll just be they'll just be dlc pack two maybe they'll yeah. announce that as well. <laughs> yeah. exclusive nintendo characters play as no, mario and dragon ball fighters no i know it's not gonna happen i just I'm always hoping for more but yeah I think I think if it comes with all the DLC, that's already a really good deal. So Mario Goku. Wow, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> funny, yeah. So you said there was an indie game you wanted to bring up. War Groove, War Groove, War Groove, because Advance Wars, as awesome as the research as the Gat game would be, I don't really know if there's much hope for that. And Warproof is kind of the same thing. It's pretty much Advanced Wars I saw mixed this, with Fire yeah. Emblem. Yeah, no, I remember this. Yeah, it was and pretty it's cool awesome. 
and I want to see that actual Ghibli release date sometime during E3. It probably won't be in the, like the unless they have like a uh, you know an Indies montage section. Probably won't have a release. Uh, I you think know, it's going to be another Indies showcase actually, because I the think they have like huh? an Indies showcases separately usually. Right. Yeah. They could show it off during the Treehouse though. They've done that for indie games before. That's a possibility. Yeah. We could see it at the Treehouse. That. Yeah, definitely. But I'm hoping, I'm really hoping to see that. I don't know if this is, I'm predicting it because I feel like indies don't have a huge presence at E3, but I think it could. And I'm really hoping it was. It's more of a hope just because, you know, indies don't have a huge presence there. But yeah. I mean, there is the, obviously, as I said, the off chance that they talk about it during the Treehouse. So. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Treehouse makes some sense, but otherwise, I I think it would be shown off at the Nindies Direct. I do. <laughs> oh, another game I wouldn't bring. I think they'll have a they'll show off Octopath Traveler one more time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. That game's coming out uh, what July twenty. Yeah, it doesn't first, really need much. It just needs like another trailer, right? And just like a date, mm -hmm. you know, just like reminding people because it's already so soon and it's gotten like quite a bit of information already. So yeah, but I think yeah. it'll be there. It'll probably yeah. sum up all eight characters and stuff like that, so... Yep. So, what's your next prediction? Let me actually go to my phone here and see. Um, hmm. All right, I put down Fire Emblem as October. Fire Emblem in October. Because I thought Animal Crossing is either October or December. It's kind of the same situation as Animal Crossing. I think one or the other is going to be in those positions, and I'm not really wish <coughs> which one they want to be. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm dying. It's over. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm just I, allergic to BS. No, just kidding. Uh, uh, yeah. But I, I could also see it in December to take kind of that Xenoblade RPG spot and have uh, Animal Crossing in October uh, to get more holidays in for people uh, right. for the end of the year. So I could see that. I have a similar thinking for Fire Emblem. I think it could be October, December as well. The game I have that's it's kind of in competition for is not Animal Crossing. We'll get to that okay. after this. But I um, think everyone knows what it is. You keep hit, I, you keep like oh, being all oh. nonchalant, like, oh, you guys are gonna be a big surprise when you hear this. Yeah, yeah we're not. Yeah, there's no surprise, <laughs> um, unless you're new. Unless you're new here, maybe you'll be yeah, surprised. Yeah, be yeah. Close, but yeah. Somewhere. So I also think that Fire Emblem is gonna be an, an October or a December title. I'd like my initial prediction for it back in march because that's when i started my predictions because i'm crazy um yeah you're insane yeah <laughs> i just i wanted to i wanted to prove my intuitional powers and just predict everything well in advance but um i thought i, I just thought it would be fun but anyways um i think i think december makes the most sense because of like what you said because it would kind of fit that xenoblade role that would work but also october hey man if we haven't seen fire emblem at all like this could be a big fire emblem this could be the biggest fire emblem yet and yeah. maybe it's like super grandiose and it could fit that position in october because last year in october we got super mario odyssey and i think now with the nintendo switch right because we're combining the handheld and console divisions here we're going to be seeing pokemon usually take up the november slot right because that's how pokemon usually does so what's going to happen mm -hmm. is that nintendo's going to have another major game they usually come out with at the holiday season it will take up a different slot and we both believe that smash is a september title so oh yeah then that leaves october last year was mario odyssey i think this year it's gonna be something big right and fire emblem could be that i kind of feel like fire emblem is more of like a xenoblade level kind of game right maybe not not in terms of sales a bit bigger than not xenoblade. not in terms of sales i just mean like in terms of scope right you know what i'm talking right. about um like for example i would say xenoblade doesn't have as much scope as breath of the wild right but that doesn't mean it's not an amazing game it is xenoblade's one of my favorite games ever but i i think fire emblem could be december but again maybe they are pushing the boundaries for fire emblem and when we finally yeah. see it on switch you know it really does kind of fit into that october time slot i got some ideas for how they could actually evolve fire emblem because right. uh, i've been i've been playing Right. Yeah. So one of the biggest things I could think of is actually letting you explore the overworld. That's not a thing in Fire in Fire Emblem, at least in Awakening. And I don't, I haven't seen anything that indicates it's in any of the newer games that much as well. I think, I think the newest one has like dungeons and stuff you can explore, but it's not nearly to the to what I'm talking about. Because uh, like in Awakening, you go level to level. It's just a map. You're like, oh, we need to go over here, and then you're there. Like, I think to actually have an open world where you can explore and run around and get into fights and stuff, 
other than just the main battles uh, would be really, really cool. Hmm. Yeah. Now, I want them to take away um, noob mode. I want to scrap it. No. Then if noob mode needs to be there just so it's approachable. No, I don't think so. I disagree. <laughs> I also want Animal Crossing Homicide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. I, I don't remember where, but I heard that this game was supposed to be, like, an amazing-looking game. Like, they're gonna That really... was from the developers. That was the, literally the only thing they've ever said about the game is it's, they're, they're really pouring in on the graphical side. So you think they're going to emphasize exploration more in this game, then? I'd hope so. I think they have been lately with the latest Fire Emblem. You could explore, like, dungeons and stuff. So I think they'll go even farther than that now that they have the power of the Switch just have a full 3D model overworld to run around and you can get into fights and it will be that typical top-down, you know, yeah. tactics RPG. I mean, there have been 3D Fire Emblem games before, like look at the GameCube, right? So, but it might be a bit more open this time. That's an interesting idea. Um, I think there's going to be online multiplayer. Like yeah. just for battles or co-op? Like to just because be it's Nintendo, Because it's Nintendo, co-op is like never online. Um... <laughs> But definitely multiplayer. I hope I would hope co-op, but again, this is Nintendo. That they, they for whatever reason, I just like for example, Pokemon Let's Go, no online co-op, right? Um, but I, I definitely think they're gonna have an online portion of the game, like multiplayer, like actually duking it out with battles, you know, Fire Emblem style. Okay. It'd be really cool. It'd be awesome, actually. So I think well, there could be a bit more of a focus on that, especially since it is slated to come out this year, and Nintendo is launching their online service in September, which is why, in case anyone missed it, which is why everyone is, a lot of people have been saying, oh, Smash in September, Smash in September, because people are thinking that, hey, they could finally have a good Smash game, but like, it's all, Smash is always good. I mean, like, a, a, right. a Smash game that has good online, launch the online never service. The case. Right, <laughs> so which is absolute garbage. Would definitely push people to buy the, on, the online as well, right? Because when it comes mm -hmm. out, people in the channel are probably going to want something to encourage people to buy it immediately, and if they do it with Smash, but it's been great. In fact, It'd be really cool if if you get Smash, you get, you know, like the first year of online free or something or something like that. Or maybe okay. the first six months. I, I think know. it would probably be more like, I think Xbox does like one month, Xbox and PlayStation. I think if you, sometimes you can buy a game and you get like a free month. So I think it'd be more like that. I don't think they'd give you like a whole free year. You're right. A year's too much. This, that's me being a little too, well, I'm asking too much. But I think I still you think... just buy one game every year and get the online for free. Yeah, <laughs> one yeah. multiplayer game a year, man. A month, a month is it makes more sense. I could, I wouldn't be shocked if they did one for three months though. I could see three, but mm. a month makes more sense. Maybe no, I'm thinking one month, two days. <laughs> it could be a week. Yeah. I've seen some games where it's just a week. It's nah, a I think they would. I keep probably on saying gonna be a month, month, but I think I, I a month probably makes more sense. Month. That's yeah. what most of them are. Yeah. You, you brought me down to earth a month you're right <laughs> yeah that makes sense um so where were we we keep on going back to smash a little, right. little oh, we were talking, talking about fire, fire emblem, emblem. Yeah. right but I, I don't really have anything to add for stuff. fire emblem it's been yeah i think, I think the there'll definitely be a lot of dlc lot yeah oh yeah for sure hopefully it's better than the latest dlc packs yeah like iowa warriors or fire emblem excuse me fire emblem warriors I feel like I, I keep calling it everything. Anytime it's warriors, it's always Hyrule warriors, and then something like like Hyrule warriors is the genre or something. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Hyrule, Hyrule warriors, Fire Emblem. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, I've made that mistake yeah. too. That that DLC sucked. It's so overpriced. Right, but I, I think, but I mean, look at all the DLC for the other Fire Emblem games. I think there'll definitely be DLC for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. But I cut you off though. What were you saying? Oh yeah, I think the cutscenes are going to be a lot better. At least compared to Awakening. I think Fates and, and the newest one have better cutscenes, but it's still, they're not great. So I think this one will have like full, like super, really well animated cutscenes. And not just the, you know, pre-scripted ones, like actual, like real-time cutscenes and stuff. Like, because uh, when you're playing Fire Emblem Awakening... There'll be like these lame ass cutscenes where they're just walking, like terrible animation quality. They'll just be like walk up and just like bleh, and it's not you. Know, like you, you're just like have to kind of assume what happened because the animation quality is so bad. You're like I'm not even really sure what happened there. So like for this one, I think it's gonna be like really, really awesome cutscenes, full voice acted like the new Fire Emblem games, 
Uh, so it's gonna be great. Oh, I see that for sure. I think it's gonna be a beautiful game. It's gonna be highly cinematic, just like you said. One hundred percent agreement. Um, yeah. So I heard. I saw a question. Uh, well, it was a couple questions. Uh, one. Do I do I think do we think that uh, at E3 they'll talk about more DLC for Mario Odyssey? Yes, I think they're gonna have two I DLC so. things. One for, well, I guess they might also bring up the Splatoon DLC as well because uh, I think it comes out after E3. Yes. Don't look up the de- date for that. June. It's in June. June. Which is really soon. Not June. Is it June? Oh, God, the dates are bad. It does what? July thirty first. Oh, so it's next month. Yeah, so they'll definitely talk about the DLC. It's my birthday. Oh, nice. Oh, good for you. Good for you. So, yeah, I think they'll probably have a DLC section or something. Well, no. Maybe. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. That's my answer to everything. Yes. Uh, I think they're definitely going to have Mario Odyssey DLC. Uh, One, because it's making them make the money. Two, because they've had free DLC be coming out for a while. And three, because Kimishima said he's going to support this year with DLC anyways. So, yeah. I'm definitely thinking it's going to be DLC at E3. Mm-hmm. Yep. Especially if they're going to have Xenoblade DLC and Splatoon DLC also at E3. They're going to be showing that for sure. And they could use that to sort of maybe sort of do the whole Mario thing sort of feature its moveset as well. Especially, like If it goes with their idea where they have like a Smash little trailer in between each game announcement, that would be would work. They right, it. they show off the new you know Mario Odyssey version of, uh, of Mario. Because yeah. I feel like he's going to have Cappy. Like, if he doesn't have Cappy, I'm disappointed. Super no, it's disappointed. too easy for them to do that. Like, they just have to swap out Flood. Like, it's so easy. And actually, another random Smash prediction, I think Flood will go with EGAD and it'll become an assist trophy. Okay. Maybe not with That's EGAD, but Flood, at least Flood in the zone will be an assist trophy. Yeah. I, that could, I could definitely see that. Yeah, for sure. Also, one other random thing. I think the, 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 uh, the Bowser Park... Mecha Bowser in Super Mario Sunshine, that roller coaster will become should be should definitely become a themed ride at the Nintendo Universal Park someday. Just saying, but uh, okay, random thought. It's not a good <laughs> prediction at all. It's a universe Nintendo Universal Park prediction. Um, but but yeah, I, I think definitely we'll get Mario Odyssey DLC. Yeah, I dude, I'd be down. Either uh, so, w- do you think it's gonna be like some people have predicted like? luigi's mansion stuff some people have said like super mario sunshine stuff what do you think it's gonna be because i I personally think it's gonna be sunshine i want there to be two kingdoms introduced one being the sunshine kingdom and other being luigi's mansion kingdom oh you're just going for everything you're just like ah there's options no just both (laughs) yep yep options yep yep yeah they could call it the haunted kingdom definitely and then down. and then isle delfino or sunshine kingdom at isle delfino or something probably sunshine kingdom and then the sub title would be isle delfino because they have right. like well, is the, the isle delfino is the isle yeah. is isle delfino considered to be part of the mushroom kingdom though uh, yeah i'd assume so it's in, so then it complain. might still it might still be mushroom kingdom isle delfino because oh. because oh, wait, wait, wait no no it's not i is it? No, it's not. No, 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 because they they had to take a plane and like, I get. Well, I mean, why it could be? Is it kind of like a Hawaii situation? Is it more of a separate place? It doesn't even have like, it's a completely different race. You're though. right. Yeah, the races are completely different. It would. It seems thematically speaking, it does seem like a different kingdom. So yeah, it probably is a different kingdom. I'm just saying that if you go to Mario Odyssey, right? Like they have the kingdom and then they have the area name. You know what I mean? So. Like, sunny kingdom. like for example, Cascade Kingdom is also what's it called? Um, uh, Fossil World. Falls. Fossil Falls, right? Exactly. So, or like Metro Kingdom is also New Donk City, Donk City yeah. right? So, like they had the kingdom, and then they still have the name of the area. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So it's probably yeah. Sunshine Kingdom, Isle Delfino. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, probably. It was just I just feel like the thing is right is that. If they bother to distinguish the kingdom and then the area, does that mean that they have a kingdom and have set multiple areas? You know what I mean? They haven't done that yet. So that's Probably why I was not. asking why. So. It, that's why I was asking if Isle Delfino is a mushroom kingdom. But it doesn't. I don't think it is. I think it is probably going to be called like Sunny Kingdom, like you said. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, let me. There was someone added me. I think it was Josh. I missed the question, though. 
All right, there we go. He said, Josh is saying, so he has one prediction for Smash Brothers. It will be cool to know who will be the next announcer because we know how every Smash game has a different announcer. Hmm. You know what? That's something that I've never really picked up on. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't... I've never cared, really. Yeah, I mean, I think the announcer could be cool. Like, I want a hype announcer. I just never yeah. kind of paid attention to a different announcer. I think it's just a different voice actor. I don't know. Is there any story behind that? I don't, I don't know of anything about it. So. Not usually. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, so... It's just cool, cool dude. Cool voice. Cool epic voice. Yeah. Imagine if it's like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> dude! Yeah. Yeah, oh, right? that'd be so weird, but so cool at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Phantasm will sing some alternate costumes for Kirby. Yarn Kirby, uh, and then... Uh, yes, please. Yoshi, Wooly World, Yoshi, Boshi, Birdo. Meta Knight could have masks, and Marth could be the groom. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I like that, actually. Marth is <laughs> an English voice for Smash. Yeah, yeah, they could totally do that this time. Um... Yeah, I, I think that those, those, all those predictions make sense. Um, yeah. So uh, you did you you brought up Fire Emblem, right? So I guess it's my yeah, turn. It's your turn. Okay. Um, let's talk about Metro Prime Four. We got yeah. Jordan Jeff Music talking now. So yeah. Um, if you guys follow me, you know I I've, I've done a lot of well I, I'm telling you, I've done a lot of research, and if you watch my the, the story and development of Metro Prime Four, I bring up a lot of different facts about the game, the development, the everything we know. And my information suggests to me that the game's been in development for at least three, for about three years. So, and the game's been, been teased since 2015. And because of that, I thought it's possible that Prime 4 could be a 2018 title, especially since they showed it, they announced it at last year's E3, considering how Nintendo's right. been announcing games and releasing games, usually not too long after with the Switch. I was thinking that Metro Prime 4 could be a 2018 title. However, more than most people believe it is a 2019 title, and even though while I think it's possible, I recognize that it could easily, easily be a 2019 title, and if the game needs more time to be the best thing it can be, then by all means. When the game is ready, the game is ready. But I still think it's possible, because I think the game's mm -hmm. been in development for longer than people think, which is why I predicted Metroid for 2018. But even in my initial predictions back in March, I put it my confidence rating at a 56%. And since then, my confidence rating has dropped 6. So now I'm at 50% Metro Prime 4 as a 2018 title, but it will definitely be at Ether regardless. Definitely think okay. we're going to at least get a trailer. And the reason why it's 50% is because I now we know about Star Fox, and I think it could be either or. It kind of depends on how far these games are. So, yeah. If Metroid's this year, I think Star Fox will make it this year, or vice versa. That's what I'm thinking. And I think it'll take up the October slot if it does make it this year. If. Okay. If. Yeah, but regardless, uh, I'm excited about this game. We can get into the specifics of the game, but let me know what you think about that. Right. I'm, I'm more of a 25% chance, especially now that Pokemon is confirmed, like Pokemon they talked about last E3, because a lot of people were like, you know, Pokemon's yes. coming 2018. Yes, then, right. you know, It was announced at the same time, but that's not the Pokemon they were talking about. The Pokemon right. they're talking about was coming next year. That's true. That makes my you know confidence level go down. Because at first, it went up. Like, when they announced Pokemon Let's Go, I was like, oh, crap. It's, you know, you, know, you talk about Metro at the same time, it went way up. It was like 75%. And then they said that, and I was like, hey, back to that. True. Wait, Very good so point. Like 25%. I and think it's definitely possible, and I would hope it would come out. Like, I'd be happy, for sure, if it came out this year. I just don't. I think they're going to delay it and make it, like, this huge, like, revival of Metroid Prime. By all means, really hey, They're going to make it sell. All for that. Like, all in on the online as well as amazing story like a super deep story but also a really good online segment so like the best of both without having to sacrifice either so i really think they're going to push this to be a big holiday title next year and it's going to be it's really going to put it in the spotlight because i think that game has so much freaking potential and it just yeah. it hasn't ever it reached really yet. does actually and i wouldn't mind that i would love that that'd be fine and mm -hmm. hey if we get star fox this year instead That'll be epic. I think yeah. Star Fox could be special. Star Fox, Love could, Star Fox, could, another could, underrated series, could take that October slot, right? Um, especially if Smash is in September. That makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I, I think it makes sense. Um, I, I, I think I'm gonna be happy either way. I think I know Nintendo's gonna at least bring out one Nintendo published game each month, and we already know Pokemon and Smash are coming this year, along with Fire Emblem and Yoshi, which leaves at least one month. Um, but here's the thing. We thought Pokemon, this Pokemon game was going to be the, the core RPG they were referencing last year, right? 
but it's not. It's something else. But it's still like kind of coarse, right? It's kind of like a, a, a stopgap, a middle ground. And I'm mm -hmm. really excited about it. Um, and we'll talk about that probably after this. But Pokemon Let's Go is more casual focused. It's a fact, right? So with that, I'm thinking that if, if that's like their November game that takes more of a casual focus, I think they may want to have something else that sort of appeal to the core audience a bit more, which is why I think there's a likelihood that either Metroid or... That, like, it's kind of one of those things where, like, because the Pokemon game they were talking about last year isn't the Pokemon game that's coming out this year, it decreases right. the chance for Metroid, like you said. But also, because this Pokemon game is more casual, I feel like it does kind of open up the... Um, the demand for a, another core title from Nintendo this holiday Prime season. Prime Trilogy HD. Yeah. We need that, dude. I, I that think movie. I predicted this a couple of months ago when we were talking about whether or not Metroid Prime 4 would come. I said, we're getting something Metroid this year, and I think if it doesn't, if it's not Metroid Prime 4, I definitely think we should get the Prime series in HD. Imagine, I think that's just too smart. It's just too smart. Like, So let's buy into that. I'm going to buy into that idea. Fine. Um, all right, so Metro Prime Trilogy, they announce it completely, you know, HD assets, it looks completely, not different, it's a bit, like, better, right? Like, a lot right. better, a lot better, and they add online multiplayer, they take the Metro Prime 2 mode, they take it away from Metro Prime 2 and expand it to sort of be an all-encompassing thing and add online, online play, just to kind of start to, you know, dabble in that area. Nothing super extensive, right, but just kind of like that arcade right. Metro Prime 2 multiplayer, just sort of bring that into online Mm -hmm. Honestly, they wouldn't really have to upgrade much. that much. Yeah. I threw that thing at a dolphin. Holy shit. That game is gorgeous. Like, the lightning holds up. You'd swear this was an Xbox 360 game for most of it. There's some rough parts where you're like, eh, the polygon count's kind of low here. But for the most part, they touch up some stuff, throw HD texture on it. Like, that game is stunning. Like, I do not know how that ran on the. Well, I do know how it ran. It's because they only loaded like one or two rooms at a time. But, like, that game, they retro series, man, they are geniuses when it comes to making games look good and just are, knowing how to use hardware. Absolutely. I mean, just oh my gosh, so smart. Just the idea of loading only the rooms you need, only the adjacent rooms. That way, there's no loading screen between, you know, when you open a door and go in, but you don't have to load the entire map at once. It's like that idea. Like they're super good about using their hardware to the fullest. They find the weak points and they finger out a way to uh you know fix that without compromising the experience so i think like that game already looks so good this i think it's kind of a wind wicker situation that game still holds up they throw new lighting on their hd textures and you know maybe a higher a slightly higher polygon count and you're good absolutely yeah um so i want to talk a little about story i brought up in my metroid prime e3 2018 predictions check it out guys if you haven't seen it but i think the story will um, center around the Metroid that Silex stole at the end of Federation Force, and we'll see that. We'll see that in the stro story trailer at this year, because I think regardless of when the game's coming out, we're going to get a trailer for it now. Uh, well, not now, but next week. Yeah, I do think so. Yeah. We'll get something for it. And, and yeah, we're going to see Silex, we're going to see Samus, maybe see Ridley to tie in that Smash announcement, or Silex. Silex or Ridley, one of them are going to tie into the trailer and Smash Brothers. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to try to start bringing the discussion down, guys. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the last few minutes of, 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 the, of the predictions cast. Um, is there anything else you want to say for Metroid, uh, Brandon, before we move on to your um, next prediction? No, I'm, I just, I'm almost I, done with my list, by the way. I have a couple other right. things. Uh, I'm almost done as well, I think. Yeah, I'm almost done myself. I know, I just think there's going to be a trailer, even if it doesn't come out this year, which I don't think it will. I think there'll be a trailer they're going to show off. I don't think they'll show a bunch of gameplay and i don't think it probably won't if it's not coming out this year probably won't be at the treehouse that maybe a little bit but not that much uh but i definitely think they're gonna get a super duper like ultra epic trailer just to throw the hype again because they know anytime they say metroid prime 4 the hype just goes through the roof and they instantly win e3 for you know even if they don't do anything <laughs> so they're definitely gonna show that game again yeah i, don't, I love no filters prediction he said red to create what? a new meme Oh, Reggie creates a new meme. Oh man, yeah, it's Reggie see, for see. that new meme. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think it could be cut scenes with a bit of gameplay, but mostly just story. Yeah, um, I, I see that. 
so um, yeah, first of all, thanks, Josh. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you, you've enjoyed the stream, really. And uh, I'm so either Metro Prime Four or Metro Prime Trilogy. We'll see at E3, I guess. I think we'll see both if if Metro is not coming. This oh year. yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't come this year, I think we'll see both. Yeah. I mean, I think Nintendo would be stupid not to do that. There's, They need to get people back into the Prime series. Same with Bayonetta. Even more so than Bayonetta, because, like, you know, Speaking Bayonetta wasn't that long ago. one of my other predictions. Bayonetta, we're going to get a trailer for Bayonetta 3. Yeah. I actually Nothing, put It's that not down this year. Was... It's not this year, but it yeah. is, we're going to get a trailer for it. I put that down as uh, a May title. I think it could be a May title. I don't think it's holiday tier. I, I think it's they're not going to launch it that much you know, over a year after one and two. I think they want to get it pretty close to a year after that. So okay. Okay. May. Okay. I think it's pretty okay. good. That's pretty good. Uh I also think Yoshi. I'm just I'm just finishing my predictions now. Unless you have okay. any more. And my Yoshi is my the last prediction I have on here. That's gonna come out this year. Oh I have one more prediction it's Pokemon Let's Go. I'll save that for okay. when you do yours. And I think Yoshi I don't have much to say on Yoshi, I just think they'll show it off. I think it's gonna look really cool. And it's probably gonna be like an August title or early September uh, title. That's exactly where I put it. I put it in August. Uh, dude, I'm not putting anything but Smash in September because it's just gonna get destroyed. I think I saw earlier today that the that online so service is coming out September thirtieth though. Um I think that's what I saw. So You saw for for what? I think I saw the Nintendo online service is coming September thirtieth. Is it? Is that I official? Don't, I, or I don't just... think it's official. I think it's just oh, okay. evidence to suggest it. Okay. It's coming. The I, they may want to get out after Spider-Man and all the other stuff that's coming, like Red Dead Redemption. Like they're yeah. not gonna put anything other than like Smash can hold their own against those games. None of their other <laughs> series can, except you know, like Pokemon or something. You know, Pokemon, Zelda, Smash, those kind of series. Like they don't really have anything this year other than Smash that could hold it. Uh, okay, its own against I just Dead I found the article on Nintendo Life. It says Nintendo Switch online membership appears on Amazon. Said to release 30th September. So according to Amazon, an Amazon okay. listing September 30th, but that's probably the last day of the month. If that's the last day of the month, it's probably a placeholder. Yeah, probably. Let's let me double check. Yeah, it's the last day of the month. So yeah, it's, that's a placeholder for seems sure. Like, seems think. like a placeholder. Yeah. So then, yeah, Yoshi probably will be August and Smash I'm thinking, will probably yeah, come like I think it's September. August. Yeah, it could be like, July. It could be July. Oh. oh, there's a ton of stuff in July already. I think they pushed yeah. it back to August. Yeah. When's Octopath Traveler coming? It's August or July? It's July. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I think August is, is Yoshi. Yeah. I could look up the exact date because I actually want to know. Yeah, Octopath. I cannot type today. Not today. Not today. July 13th, 2018. There it is. So I definitely think Yoshi's August. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah so I only have one more thing to talk about uh, in terms of my predictions, but do you, do you have anything left, Brandon? Uh, let me just do a quick look over, but I think that was it. E yeah, that, that was it. Okay. Well, we have Lavender Town music playing, which is a song that you will hear in you see in the Kanto region. And guess where Pokemon's going back this year? Kanto. We already got the review for Pokemon Let's Go. I think Pokemon Let's Go will be in the presentation. We'll see Treehouse footage of it. We'll learn more about this game. We'll learn more about the battle mechanic, which is the thing that I'm most concerned about. Not wanting to say that I'm most looking forward to because I'm hoping that it's pretty comparable to previous games, right? As I'm okay with them sort of taking away EV training and IV training for this game, but still having them as a background mechanic, but just had not having a focus on them, right? Then it's still just kind of playing like old Pokemon games. I'm fine with that. Um, I feel like Mega Moves, like there was an interview where he was asked about Mega Evolutions and the Z Moves, I believe, Masuda. I have to double check, but I, I saw a video on it. I was reading the interview earlier, but I didn't read the whole thing. Um, he was asked about Z moves and Mega Evolutions, or at least one of them. Well, at least one of those, 100%, and maybe both. And he said they have nothing to announce at this time. It was not, you know, did, he did not say no. Like, for example, he was asked if we're going to be able to go to Johto, which is the region right next to Kanto. Um, and he said no for that, flat yeah, out. That's a not... weird thing to, to say, like, they're not going to announce anything at this time. Maybe they have a new version of it. Maybe, like, or maybe they want to like, save it for the post game. Actually, my predictions video for Pokemon Let's Go, I literally say, I well, I, I speculate that the Z moves and Mega Evolutions are going to be something that will be in the game, but it'll be more for the post game after you beat the main story, become something that's available later. And if they're not going to announce yeah, it at this did. time, maybe they don't want to, you know, show it off because it's post game. It's a surprise, right? That would make sense to not announce it now, you know. Yeah. And maybe they want it later in the game, so. Early players can kind of get used to the battle mechanics and then get introduced to the new. Right, thing. slowly. Like when I played 
through. Like, I just got this Z crystal, and I was like, what do I do with this? That what makes sense. This? I haven't even gotten used to the normal Kedex yet. Why are you throwing this at my face? That's true. And they probably want to make this seem as inviting as possible. So if they throw all these other crazy weird mechanics, people are like, oh, this seems a little bit too extra for me. So, like, the, mm -hmm. the initial I trailer... I got that text where it's like, I can't believe you, but he beat the Kahuna without even using Z-moves. I was like, that did not even cross my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, Z-moves are, are cool. You should use them. Um, but yeah, I think they could potentially be like a late to post game sort of feature, which is why we haven't seen them talked about yet, but they may be referenced at the treehouse. We're going to learn more about this game at the treehouse, hopefully about the battle system, hopefully about Z moves. And I think we're going to see that the story for this game isn't a straight rip of the story from Pokemon Yellow version. I think no, this game is actually so. speculating it's going to be a little bit in the future because in the initial leak, it talked about how red and blue are going to be play a role in the story implying mm -hmm. that you don't play as red and blue and from what we see yeah. of the characters they look nothing like red and blue and so, they said the story they said it's not a remake they like, said it's based off of yellow version yeah they said it's just inspired or based off of it it's not right. a remake so obviously yeah. like i don't think the story is gonna be the same yeah that wouldn't make much sense so you know that that leaves room for the environment being a little different maybe some towns have extra buildings or the story is a little different maybe some gym, different gym leaders could be different yeah right maybe we'll see some d different elite four you know we already know there's a lowland pokemon are in the game so that alone proves that this is going to be different right mm -hmm. um they're going to probably have some sort of story relating to that they're probably going to reference alola at some point which is the the region the last region we played in sun and moon so yeah, I think the story is gonna be different, and we're gonna play fight red and blue at some point in the game. They're gonna be kind of like boss characters. Yeah. I that. also think they're gonna treat legendary Pokemon as boss fights. Like we know, apparently, I said somewhere that they, they can battle legendary Pokemon, just not wild Pokemon. They like you battle them kind of like trainers. So I think they'll treat battle like legendary Pokemon kind of like boss fights. And if you look at the trailer, they have a whole cutscene from YouTube, which yeah. they've never done before for a Pokemon game. So they're making them more epic, and I don't think it's just going to be a catching screen. You're going to fight them, and oh, it's yeah, going to be more sure. intense. It's going to be a lot I more I heard intense. some people who were like, oh, it's going to be lame because you're going to have this epic cutscene, and you're just going to start throwing balls at me. I, th like, I think they really? missed the memo like, on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like, dude, I don't, I literally never got that sense. <laughs> no. No, yeah, I think they that missed the memo no on that. Sense. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, this, the, all the information has been coming out from different places in d different ways for this game, so it's kind of hard to have a full understanding of yeah. everything that's been said about this. Well, the Twitter thing was cool because it was kind of hype. Like, I had so many tabs open, I was like, reloading everything, and I was super hyped, and like, oh, this bit of information, this bit of information. That led to a lot of misinformation and confusion, and it was overall Especially a with very online. bad thing. Especially yeah, the they need to get in at E3 and be like, hey, this is how it is. Like, yeah. straight up, like, this is the information, this is how it is. They need to have a treehouse segment, and they need to detail things. And they need to be very clear about it, because so far, it's a confusing mess. Right, I think you need to clear it up, because right now, while I'm going to get the game, there are things about it that are have me reserved. Like, once I need to learn a couple other things, and once those things are verified for me, then I'll be like, oh my god, I need this right now. Like, right, like, but there's a couple things that have me a little concerned as a hardcore competitive player right. i already understand it's a more casual oriented game i understand that but i want to know to what extent and if it's still going to appeal to me because like right now the game seems really really easy like not just half as easy yeah. like exponentially easier uh, like i, I mean, mean i played moon literally like i i beat the island kahuna with no i didn't even get a single pokemon death i just literally used the same pokemon spammed the same move and like insta killed everything so i feel like the other Pokemon games were super easy already. <laughs> Maybe um, I was like grinding and catching Pokemon, not for that long, but I was like as I went, you know, just here's some tall grass, let's catch some Pokemon, and I, you know, but like if you grind at all in Moon, you were so overpowered and just murdered literally everything like one shot. Yeah, so bad. They yeah. need to have like a hard mode. They need settings. Why they, they need a hard mode? mode. There was a hard black and white. Two, I believe, had a hard mode, but you don't think you, you had to beat the game to get hard mode or something. Right. I, I haven't even. Mode from I, this is my first Pokemon game, and I feel like I need a hard mode already. That's how easy Moon is. Yeah. The Sun and Moon. I don't know. Maybe they're easier than the other normal Pokemon games. Is would they? Would you say that's correct, or is that typically say how? Say that again. The last part, I missed it. Uh, what is Sun and Moon like? You know how difficult most Pokemon games are. Is it easier? Is it an easier one in the series? Or mm, I'm trying to remember. It didn't feel like it was hard at all. 
Yeah, I mean, like, if you went up to a trainer, they typically have, like, one. Like, if you went up to a trainer with, like, two Pokemon, you're like, oh my gosh, trainer's two Pokemon. Oh, um, he's still dead. I don't remember it being, like, I, I wasn't, I don't, when I played it, I didn't feel like, oh my god, this is way too easy, right? I didn't. I felt like, dude, um, like, I, I cannot die. <laughs> well, did you, here's the, thing, here's the thing, though, you probably had experience share on. I always have experience oh, share didn't. off. Um, because when you have experience share on, your Pokemon level up way quicker. And I have mm -hmm. that off to make it harder for me. So that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, I'll probably end up turning it. I just, I mostly have it on for, like, just sake of time. So I don't want to have to, like, grind. So I have it on so that my Pokemon just level up with me. Okay. I wish there was a less experience mode. Like, like experience share still, but less. Like, it feels really overpowered. Like, maybe, I like the idea of it. Maybe they can just have options. Like, like exper have experience yeah. share on or off, but also have a hard mode, right? Where the AR is, where the AI is smarter, where they hit harder, where the level mm -hmm. scaling is a little different. Where maybe, yeah, level scaling. They could just make level the levels scaling higher. Level scaling so bad. So bad. Like, I go up, I'm like level freaking 21 against this level 9 Pidgeon. It's an like, easy oh, way I... to have hard <laughs> mode, too, just upping the level counts as well. Yeah. Um,. I think they could do that. Will they do it? Well, they haven't really done it for other Pokemon games, and this game's more, even more casual oriented, right. so it makes me concerned. Especially if there's a uh, co-op mode that literally gives you double firepower, right? Yeah. I and, just feel like I don't understand why they don't have like why some games are like so weird that they just like don't have difficulty options. Like that seems like a thing. Like this is 2018, should have difficulty options in every game. We well, shouldn't be able to have a bag. I think, I think the hope is I believe I heard that there's gonna be save files on this one. And since so this is a console game, it's gonna have co-op mode. Another thing we mm -hmm. see a lot of you know games is they have multiple difficulty levels. Maybe there's something else they'll introduce since they are introducing other concepts as well. Maybe, hopefully, yeah, they fingers need, crossed. Maybe we'll that's see. something they'll br to try to bring in more hardcore fans to be like, oh, hardcore fans, try hard mode. So that this hardcore fans will still buy it. It's so easy. Why won't they do it? It's so easy. I know, man. So it would be so easy. Like if what they did that, company? there would be. If they did that, there would be people that would be like, "Yep, okay, now I'm gonna buy this Pokemon game because I need a challenge." Like there are core fans that won't buy it because they're like, "Oh no, it's not for me." But if you just say, "Hey, look, we have an extra hard mode," and people are like, "Oh, tell me more," like that, <laughs> like it would just be so easy to implement so easy to implement and they would make more money but i feel like they won't do it because they've never done it before Ugh. it literally makes no sense why they would not do this i i feel like this would be the the best game to introduce it just because it's it's got that casual market you got that lockdown i've seen so many people casual pokemon fans like i'm getting this for sure no matter what the only people you haven't convinced are the hardcore fans that's it yep like me so just say there's an extra hard mode and bam on board yeah. Yeah, I'm on board. I really would be. That would be it. I would be like, oh, okay, we're good. Like that's all they have to you do. Should work but they won't. <laughs> no, they be like, no, no, you're too, you're too hardcore. Yeah, you have to think more about the masses. Um, the yeah. masses can just pick easy mode. It's not hard. <laughs> yeah. Sabbath wants to know if we're gonna be picking up the Pokeball Plus. No, but I want to. I probably want to end up doing it just because I'm not a hardcore Pokemon fan, but it interests me. I'll probably end up buying a, a game instead, like an actual other game. It's so expensive, it's almost the price of a whole game. That's yeah. the thing. I'm just going to buy an, a whole other game. <laughs> How expensive for is it? 50 Oh, dude, I can get games for $48 new at Best Buy. Yeah. That's more than a new game. <laughs> like, it's cool, but I'm also I'm in my mid-20s now, guys. So, I don't know. I used to carry my 3DS I, around. Hey, on a little I missed the Poker Walker. The Poker Walker came with Soul Silver. That was cool. Came um, with it, dude. It did. It did. It's cheaping out on us. Yeah, they did. I guess this um, is like a whole it's, other it's a, like, it's, it's, Joy Con. It has it's like Rumble even and more Jandro technology than the Joy Con. Stuff. It's even more technology than the Joy Con. So, yeah, because it's got speakers and stuff. Yeah, it is the IR sensor though, so it kind of balances out. To an extent, but if you buy the left Joy-Con, still forty dollars. Just saying. True. Um. Yeah, I want it, but fifty dollars is a steep price. It, maybe if I see what it can get me in the game, maybe I'll change my mind on it. We'll see. If I see a hands-on of the hand of the Pokeball, or maybe if I get a hands-on myself before I buy it, it depends on that. But this time, I'm up in the air for it. I I just wanted it for like the cool, like just just to have it as a collectible. But I'm hearing fifty dollars, and I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah, 
But I wanted a collectible, I could just buy some. Furukawa is saying it's technically the price of a Joy-Con, which I believe is 40. I think it is. I think it's 50 separately, because they chalk it up. 80 together, 50 separately. Oh, you can buy it together? You can buy it separately. No, no, I'm saying the Joy-Cons, you can buy them separately, and they're $50 a piece. But they're, if you buy two Joy-Cons, then it's Oh, is 80. that what it is? Yeah. So it's technically the same price. The okay. Joy-Con. I'm going like, to Nintendo.com. I'm going to double check this right now. Just... I want to get my facts straight. Get my facts straight. And in that way, it makes sense. I don't know where are the buttons. It's like click in. I don't understand where the buttons are. I haven't seen any buttons. On There's it. a button like, at the top. It, yeah, it looks like you like click in the whole thing. It's weird. I wonder if it's like multi-directional though. So depending on where you press it, it still presses more. But it just looks like one button on the surface. That's what I wonder. I don't know. Right. So I'm trying. So I'm like, to... do you only have A <laughs> or B? Yeah. Or I'm confused. Yeah. Okay, How do you well. hit back? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays. Did we talk about Pokemon, possible Pokemon cards? Have they no. announced anything? Amiibo cards? Oh. I think... It's I don't know. I, 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 I've I seen the patterns for it. I do believe that that could be a thing. Yeah, I patterns. don't know if they're doing it now. The I think they'll wait for Gen 8. Yeah, they might be waiting for ne next year. So I think we're in the same, we're in the same boat with that, Brandon. Oh, Pac-Man suggests Eevee for Smash. Yeah, I have made that prediction as well. A lot of people have. Um, makes a lot of sense. It would be really cool to see them switch between evolutions, right? Kind of like Pokemon Trainer. I really like that. Jolteon, Flareon, yeah. Vaporeon. Pokemon Trainer was awesome. Freaking 3DS making everything. And Jolteon could be faster. Flareon could take more hits. Or Vaporeon could take more hits. And then Flareon could just be kind of like a kamikaze kind of style. Be interesting. I, yeah, Shintaro, I'd buy the Kanto Amiibo cards as well, because uh, those are the ones I know most, because I grew up with Stadium. Hmm. Well, so I like all one. Pokemon, so, you know. I know, but, I mean, like, I don't I mean, I think what I think the like, special thing about Pokemon Let's Go, I think it's going to be, it's going to trick you into liking other Pokemon. So I think it's going to do. I love the ones in Sun and Moon. That, I think that's what's going to happen. A lot of people are very uh, adverse to other Pokemon aside from the original 151. I think Pokemon Let's Go is going to get you to like other Pokemon. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think it's going to build up the fan base even more. It's already huge. I think it probably will. Yeah. That so, makes uh, total sense. Get you to buy Gen 8. Yeah. So I think, um, is there anything else you want to do? I think I think we're pretty much at, at the end of this discussion. Yeah. Guys, absolutely. if there's anything else you want to bring up, bring it up. Um, I guess we could just sort of run through, summarize our predictions. Smash Bros. September, we agree, we agree. Uh, mm -hmm. Adventure mode, adventure mode, yeah, adventure mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adventure mode, scrap and Dope adventure the mode. tour mode, maybe have that, oh, that tag team mode that you talked about. They thought the tag team mode. Or the different stock battle one. Different stocks for each character, yeah. I think some char we think some characters, Ice Climbers for sure, probably almost every character is coming back, maybe Wolf's coming back, right? Maybe we'll see Ridley, maybe Rex see and Pyra. Silas, Rex and Pyra, yeah. Banjo, hopefully. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, I think we, we're both talking about your Prime 4. We think it'll be shown off. We're not sure about, I'm not sure about the date, but as we're confident about 2019, I think it's a 50 50. Um, we think Star Fox will be shown off as well. That for me is a 50 50 on this year. Brandon thinks it's next year for sure. Um, and we think it's going to be really, really good. It's going to be a hybrid, hybrid, a hybrid genre, not fully racing, not fully shooting. It's going to be a mix. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be really cool. Um, Animal Crossing is going to be shown off, we think, right? Uh, I think it's going to be early 2019. You think it potentially could be a holiday title? Mm -hmm. Pokemon Let's Go, well, we already know that's a holiday title where it's going to be showing off at this year's E3. Hopefully it's going to have additional story and Mega and Z moves afterwards and boss fights for the legendary Pokemon. Yeah, hopefully a hard mode too if they're smart. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, then, you know, uh, what else? We're going to see, a tra I think, a trailer for Bayonetta 3, a trailer for Yoshi. I think Fire Emblem is going to be a bigger title than we expected either December or October. We're, we're kind of this, on the same page with that one. Wait, say that again? Uh, Fire Emblem. I, th I think we're on the... That we're, October we're or December? It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, Brandon thinks Pikmin 4 will be shown off. I don't. Yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 on that, but I'm going to say for the sake of final predictions, it'll be shown. Yeah, I want to see it, but I, I, I'm just not sure this is the time for it. Um, I kind of agree. I halfway agree. Yeah. I mean, it's either or, right? So for third parties, I'm predicting Fortnite with Nintendo Cosmetics, Gyro Aiming, and HD Rumble, Dragon Ball Fighters with all the DLC, some game from Bethesda, maybe Fallout 76 or a port of Fallout 3 or 4, 
Beyond Good and Evil 2 will be announced for the Switch at Ubisoft's conference, but along with the other systems. A Red Steel 3 game, I think, is becoming exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. If not that, another Ubisoft exclusive. And a Grand Theft Auto 5 port. Yep. Yeah. Did we cover everything? Yeah, I think, I think we kind of summarized it all. Good. Did we say Metro Prime 4? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Metro yeah, we Prime 4. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we mentioned it. Okay, you mentioned it. Yeah. I got everything on my list in that. Um... Um, Wargroove, I think, is going to show. Oh, you think Wargroove will be at the treehouse, probably? Yeah, probably at the tree. It could be at the treehouse. Yeah. Um, yeah, did we say Yoshi was in August? I think we yeah, we that. think Yoshi's going to be August. I, so, I think we have them. I guess to, to slot out the dates for the holiday season, Yoshi, August, Smash, September, October, I'm predicting either Star Fox or Metroid, one or the other, and the other one will be coming out next year. Although we talked about the possibility of Metroid Prime a Trilogy HD, that also makes a lot of sense. So maybe Star Fox and Metro Prime 4 don't come this year. They're both next year, like you think, Brandon. And we get Metro Prime Trilogy HD in October, maybe? Or December? Well, I can see Star Fox. This... I'm not going to completely decide on Star Fox. Yeah, we'll see. But one of those three, I think, could hit the October slot. Or Fire Emblem takes that slot, and one of those three takes the December slot. And then Pokemon's November, which is already confirmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I then... Think, I think Animal Crossing is going to be December. Yeah, or and... October. Oh, yeah, you think maybe Animal Crossing could be there as well. I think it's early 2019. Um, and then I think we, that's we, it. We brought up Mario Party. We think Mario yeah. Party could maybe come out this year as well, depending on which region you talk about. The 20th anniversary is either this year or next year. So Mario Party could also be shown off. Right. It's also something they could easily be shown off and come out early next year, like February. Like I think we kind of like concluded. Right. right? And it could be shown off like a, in a January direct, like a mini direct, like kind of like what we got this year for some games. Sabbath just... just fucked everything up he asked about a legend of Zelda hd remake i next forgot year. Next i year. think next year i think that they're going to show off skyward sword hd at e3 this i year. think it will take yes this year Ooh. but i don't think it'll come out this year i think it will come out in the same time as uh uh when Twilight princess hd came out because that was shown off at e3 i think or close to e3 at least and then it came out the next year so i think that will happen for skyward sword yeah. early next year i think it was like april or something came out mm. so i think, I think the skyward sword hd is not gonna it, i think it's a thing maybe but it's not coming out this year at all and we don't need to see it because no, it's it's it. because it's an hd remake i don't even think it needs to be shown off if, if any true. in we my opinion it if it's a remake and it's not coming out really soon no reason to show it off that's my opinion that's perfectly true this is not the wii u yeah <laughs> you're not the show of hd remakes that's very true okay i don't think we'll see the e3 then I think we'll um, see it in direct later this year. Yeah, so... Early next uh, year, maybe. Furukawa is saying that we have some high expectations, but I want to point out that Fire Emblem, Yoshi, Pokemon, and Smash Bros. are already all confirmed for 2018. In our predictions, we're only suggesting one other game to maybe make it out by the end of this year. Yeah, I think we're... Other than the ones that are confirmed are heavily leaked. Like, the only one I'm predicting is... Animal Crossing. That's the only one that's not confirmed or heavily, heavily leaked. And Animal Crossing just makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, I don't think we're that we're making any crazy predictions. Well, I'm not saying, some people might think my third party yeah, stuff is a little crazy. Four. Like I'm saying, Red Steel Three and right. Beyond Good and Evil Two. Beyond Good and Evil Two. Beyond Good and Evil Two. That one's been heavily confirmed. Leaked. Yeah, Red Steel Three is just kind of out of the blue, but I think Ubisoft is going to show support from Nintendo. I think they'll do uh, some. Some, yeah, the Ubis- Ubisoft has been really supporting the Switch, so they definitely have something good. Yeah. Um, and GTA Five has been sort of rumored for a really long time. And Bethesda's been supporting Nintendo better than no other. So I definitely think we're going to see more support yeah. from them. Ubisoft um, and Bethesda have been the two big ones, I think. And Bandai Namco, so those are the big three. Right. And then, of course, Bayonetta 3 Metro Prime 4 were already announced a long time ago, so to see a trailer for them at A3, I don't think is crazy. Now, mm-hmm. I'm saying that Metro Prime 4 could be this year, but I also acknowledge that 2019 is right. also a great time for it as well. I'm giving it at like a 10, uh, like 15 to 25%. That's my chance. Yeah, I'm a little higher, but not a lot higher. Um... Oh, I said 50, so that's, that's high. That's <laughs> oh, pretty high. It's pretty high, actually. Yeah, but I'm also completely happy with getting Star Fox instead this year. I think right. that's a great could be a great fit. And I think where the smoke, there's fire, right? Because we're hearing about the Star Fox stuff now, I think it's possible because it's maybe one of the announcements. It's kind of like the way Rayman, Rayman Raven Rabbids is sort of... Not Rayman Raven Rabbids, uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle was sort of right. leaked. I think that's the same That's the same thing as for Star Fox. Um, yeah. 
It's, it sounds crazy on paper, but you actually see it's it. It's one of those things that someone wouldn't really come awesome. up with. That's the thing. It's someone that would. Some, it's something that only a developer would like decide to do, right? Right. So, yeah. Um, but let's talk about quickly the 2019. 2019. So I'm just gonna, you know, because everyone wants to go. I'm gonna assume Metro Prime 4 is 2019 for the sake of this of this little mini topic to end everything. Um, so, well, in my head, Animal Crossing. Well, I'll say my idea for 2019, then you say yours, right? Okay. So, well, first I'll say that Star Fox, Star Fox Smash, Pokemon, Let's Go, Yoshi, a Mario Party game, and Fire Emblem are this year. And then, well, actually, no. Scrap the Mario Party game. Everything else, yes. Okay, so right. Mario Party early next year, Pikmin 4, Summer, Bayonetta 3, Summer, August or September, Metro Prime 4, and Pokemon 2019 are all next year. Along with Skyward Sword HD. Okay. Yeah, we already so that's already like half the year right there. I I pretty much agree with all of that. Also, Animal I, Crossing early 2019. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what that's, that's where we dispute. I think there is a chance for sure that it could come out. I'm I'm kind of 50 50 actually on whether it would come out this year or early next year. I think looking. I think when we looked at the release date, right, Animal Crossing typically comes out late, right? Like holiday kind of well, sort of. It depends if you. I think new. I think it came recently out. it came out. Uh, holiday. I could look it up. Damn it! You're gonna beat me again. Uh, November eighth. Yeah. Damn it! Two of them have been. Oh, yeah. They've pretty much all been in november except this but you, there's a difference though there's this thing called pokemon true um what, what i think you'll be pushed to like december then i did a pokemon game come out in 2011 i'm not did sure it, did it come on 2012 x and y came... eight or 2005 pokemon x and y came out 2013 i believe it did and that means pokemon black and white 2 came out maybe 2011 which is the last Pokemon game before X and Y. What, 2008? Pokemon Black and White 2 came out 2012 in the summer? Oh, that was before they switched to global releases. Yeah. So it kind of throws things off. Yeah, I could see it in December instead. I mean, they could. yeah, I don't think they'll both be in November. They could. But I, I feel like so. Pokemon's too far in the middle of the month for them to do two games in November. Yeah. Yeah. So probably December then, or October. Yep. If it comes out this year. But I could definitely see it early next year. I just feel like for Animal Crossing, it's never really come out early, except I think the original one. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think we're done. We done? Yeah, I'm, I'm done, bro. All right. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Um, you have 30 seconds to put down anything you want to talk about, but if not, we're going to call it a night. Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, clown quickly. Um, but oh. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, again for everyone watching. See you, Sabbath. See you, Shunjiro Furukawa, Pac Man, Josh. No filter. Oh, well, he oh, has boys. a question, actually. He got in the and three seconds. Girls. He got it in. Uh, question Do you guys think Reggie will be heading the presentation or do you think Shunjiro may come out? I think uh, we talked about it at some point, but we weren't 100% sure. I think Shuntaro Furukawa will be seen at the presentation, but I'm not saying it's going to be the focus. I definitely think Reggie and Bellarmine are part of it. Now, who's going to be, like, the head guy? There may not be a specific head dude. Uh, That's may... what I'm thinking. There's probably not going to be a specific head dude. They... Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of different people. I also think Koizumi is also going to show up. He's He has great oh. stage presence. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that. I just forgot his name. But yeah, him. I was going to say the Mario guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, but I guess that that's it, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, hype. The hype is real. Seven more days. <sighs> yep. Oh my gosh. So it is because um, it's like, oh gosh, it's so close. Right. Yeah. So that's everyone who's watching, cool. remember to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't been here before. Also check out Brand's channel. What about Nintendo? The link is in the description below. And Pedro, Pedro, sorry, was in the first half of this discussion. He had to leave early. But pay him pay your love. He doesn't have a, a social media account to reach at this point, but definitely he's you gonna know, try to get a YouTube soon. So when that him, happens, I'll let him, you guys know. Send him good wishes, exactly. Uh, so keep him in your minds. But anyways, um, yeah, I get, we will be seeing you guys really soon. Check out our channels. I have we have a lot of E3 coverage already. I have like oh, yeah. predictions for like Star Fox, Metroid, Smash, and Pokemon already. So check I have out predictions my for Animal Crossing and Star Fox. 
Uh, Metroid prediction should be coming out tomorrow. Yep. So check those out, guys. And uh, next week we'll be doing something. I think we're definitely going to have a post E3 discussion on Tuesday night. We may have a Monday one. I may po- just have this post the, the next week's podcast happen on Tuesday night because of E3. We'll see. Stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter, Discord, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah. Good night. Bye, guys.